good sense of speed. Vibrator force, 10,000. I don't know. This is the spike of the video. I racing do you want me to say? No. Oh, no. Bantortolini from Sim Racing Expo 23. Get out. And the scooter guard's giving us a look there. He's not a very good security guard because we've, we've just run off with a skateboard. Welcome to this year's full virtual tour of Sim Racing Expo, where I take you through Sim Racing Expo as if you were here, but virtually. This video is, of course, sponsored by absolutely nobody. So if you enjoy it, make sure to click the like button, make sure to subscribe, and uh, then make yourself a cup of tea. Let's go around Sim Racing Expo 2023. all taking place in a single ginormous hall and we go past these uh, ADAC uh, umbrellas ADAC of course is uh, the uh, the main partner of Sim Racing Expo and uh, basically like the German AA if you will um, a weird a weird uh, partnership you'd think because uh, either gonna fix your sim rig if it breaks down but look at this nice table here get a nice wave there we've got uh, that's, that's so you know that you're at Sim Racing Expo 2023. You can get some water for free as well. I'm going to take one of them and put it in my back pocket. They've got some cool sunglasses. Um, and uh, uh, what's this? Uh, wine gum. Wine gum. It's a wine gum. Awesome. So, what's on the right and what's the first thing that you can see at Sim Racing Expo? You have this uh, grit racing booth here where they have a uh, motion simulator, four actuators, we've got some pedals here, um, and they look like he the Holsingveld uh, sprint pedals, four corner actuators, and uh, we have on this, uh, what they're showing off is a uh, haptic seat, where the uh, seat has um, pressure pads on it that allow you to feel the g-forces of the car so this driver right now is getting their uh, their side squashed as they go through the corner now we need to jump in and try this for a separate video later on because i actually think this sort of thing is proper interesting the lack of g's in a simulator is one of the worst things about it despite the fact you can feel quite a lot through uh, a simu cube wheel direct drive wheel and uh, the cube control rim there Having that extra feel on the seat could be really interesting. So look out for that video later on, guys, on the channel. But that's uh, grit racing with their rig and uh, their cushions that's inflate. So you can't really see it inflating it. A little bit, look. You can kind of see it moving a bit. So that'll be interesting to try out properly. Let's keep going to our second booth here. And we have the uh, live racer, live2race.com, which is a... Uh, an absolutely humongous uh, motion simulator with uh, rear traction loss, front traction loss, and uh, a huge, huge cockpit. And we get a smile there, hello. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what DD World is, it looks like a Simu Cube, Cube Wheel, and uh, they are playing Assetto Corsa, I think. Yes, it is glorious set of course, of course. Why would you use any other simulator? They've got wind sims on there to blow at the driver. And uh, the interesting thing with this is, is this huge platform um, on the bottom that obviously is moving it. You can see it can move forwards, backwards, rear traction loss, front traction loss. And then you have uh, the four, looks like four point or six points of uh, motion for tilt and track texture and movement. Uh, so this is the Live Racer 2, uh, the Pulse 6000, because your pulse rate will be going at 6000 if you uh, purchase one of these, because they're, they're basically free, they're almost free. So uh, this is obviously more for your sort of uh, testing, driver training, or like, you know, like large events if you want something super spectacular. I quite like the driver's seat and how that's mounted in there. You know, really looks like a proper chunk of serious business. And look at these, uh, the cable tidies that keeps everything nice and in place and the power supply at the bottom. Amazing stuff. So, they've also got their own software for launching into uh, AC, which is nice. You find that in a lot of events, things that make things nice and simple. Um, so people could just jump into the game without too much fiddling. That was Live Race Pulse 6000. Moving on 
over to our next booth we have the IMSIM booth with the uh, IMSIM rigs here and we have some legends of sim racing. Tiago here. How's it going? Now uh, I'm going to show people the rigs quickly again here. <laughs> so we have the IMSIM it's like the IMSIM rig. Basically, you can watch a video on our channel. We went, we went to their factory in Portugal a while back, um, and these rigs are really, really, I think they're really nice looking myself. Uh, but the big thing with these rigs is that they're really uh, compact, but also really adjustable. They use uh, like hydraulics to hold, uh, to, to position the wheel, and you can just push a button on here and move the wheel up, down, in, out and set it up and then when you remove it it locks into place perfectly um, you could do that also for the pedals and they just slide when you push them and holding down the single button and you can also move the chair using the seat slider IMSIM as a company are like really good for just focused design um, stuff like they've got the D-Box on here but the, the other rig they did actually doesn't have um, the, the D-Box system on it uses a different motion system but they use the D-Box here really nicely just for the main suspension motion dialed in not moving a lot but then they have tactile transducers fitted on the pedals on the seat and uh, that allows the tactile transducers to do all like the really sort of fine details really responsive details and for these to do suspension um, which I think is a really good way of doing it. I think all the best sims basically use a combo of tactile transducers as well as uh, proper servo actuators. Now we could not mention that they're using the uh, Imsim Talento pedals here. These are like really, really nice pedals to use. As again, we were playing around with them at the factory. We have some of these at home that we will be putting our rig suit. Uh, these pedals, you can really quickly change the different elastonomers in there to change how you want it to feel dial it in which at home maybe that's not the biggest thing but if you're again at a sim center or you just want to quickly go through different pedals like maybe you've got different cars you drive that could be quite a good feature for people um, and then you've just got a uh, on this rig you've got the accelerator which is a really sturdy spring on there but uh, the Insim Talento pedals are really a nice fit we'll have a review video of these very soon actually um, genuinely this brake is one of the nicer feeling brakes on the market that I've used but there's, there's the uh, IMSIM rigs here got a nice ultra wide monitor they've got a Fanatec DD, uh, uh, DD Pro on there with the uh, looks like an OMP Tricento uh, and the uh, Cobb Sport Hub this is the wheel the circular wheel I use this OMP Tricento wheel rim is amazing so I didn't communicate with IMSIM about this, they've just got a good taste when it comes to what feels good and what works well. So OMP Tricento, that's what you want, made in Italy obviously. Um, really nice to see they've got this, this is a new rig they're showing off with the actual four point actuator. Their original rig has just the, uh, the, the point in the bottom and it mostly does, um, the, you feel the traction loss because it rotates left and right and then it has the two rear actuators that um, tilt the chair and allow the driver to feel bumps and uh, the motion of the vehicle. They've also put thousands of speakers over this so that the driver can go deaf just like you would in a real car. Um, look, he's absolutely hammering it. But I uh, really like these uh, IMSIM rigs. We might pop on one of these and do a little video of it. If we don't get time though, you can check out our uh, factory tour video that we did a while back. So thanks for that, Tiago. We're going to see you later. Cheers, man. Right, on to the next one, guys. We've got a crowd of people. Sim Racing Expo, absolutely ramshackled with people here. Uh, it's crazy, crazy busy. Really nice to see. Uh, let's go to this booth here. We have the Camus Smart Drive with infinite fun. The fun never ends. So we have, uh, I think this is actually more of a shop. I can't read their logo. Aceluf, and I think they uh, sell wheel rims that can then go on other companies' button boxes. So yeah, they look like a wheel rim manufacturer. Really nice, loads of different options. Uh, suede, Alcantara, Fe uh, PU. Uh, they've got this feels like real leather. 
Nice. This is what I'll be going for myself, though. The real leather all the way. It's quite a nice feeling uh, rim, actually. Um, let's do a little... We've got some QR codes here. Well, oh, there we go. So you can see the wheel rims here, the fact that they're universal, or you could have put them on anything. So you've got like a T300 uh, Thrustmaster base, not the new DD wheel base quick release, but the old one. Um, all right, and you've got uh, a hybrid ES, which is recording the video. So wait, you're now, he's now trapped. You're now trapped on the channel. How do you feel? Oh, I don't feel <laughs> there you go. So we also have more Formula rims here. We've got the L style uh, rim. And this has got a, I don't know what that's for. Um, what's this one got on it? This is a Moser. And we have a, I don't, again, I don't know what quick release this is. I'm, I'm getting out of date. Maybe it's like a Logitech quick release or something. Oh, here we go, G923. Yeah, I don't know how that would work. But uh, here's the QR code. You can photograph your screen if you want to see more about these wheels. Like a grandma using a computer, photograph your screen and you're good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they look like fairly nice, uh, fairly nice wheels. Um, on the cheaper side, I'd imagine compared to uh, yeah, the like 59, 59. Well, actually, very affordable. So very affordable wheel rims compared to what you see elsewhere. Uh, so uh, quite interesting. Let's have a feel here. This one's the best one. Okay, so of the rims, this, this, whatever this is, the F27 formula has the best grip feel. That's my 10 second review. They've got some more stuff over here. They're giving out stickers and they've got gloves and they've got some more wheel rims there. By the way. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we've got some more rigs as well. Um, let's have a look. Really nice actually to see cheaper stuff that's not a crazy price. I think it's a big problem with sim racers, a lot of stuff's just far too expensive. We have here the Golf Esport grip. I think they're doing a, they're doing a, they're actually doing an esports race at the moment, so let's try not to uh, get in the way too much. Imagine trying to actually drive seriously whilst having crowds of people around you. It's really not ideal. Um, so we have the Golf rig here. We have the pedals. Let's, someone else is doing a video over there. I don't want to get in the way of that video, so we're going to walk around here and uh, find a way through. <laughs> Pull the cables out of the computer. There we go, look, we're not in their video. You can see the pedals. Oh, I was like a ninja, Sim Racing Expo ninja. We have uh, SRP pedals. Look like they've got some kind of hydraulic cylinder on them. We've got a nice spring system on the brake with, again, hydraulics, I believe. I don't know how that works. I don't think I've ever used them, so I can't really comment on them. I will say, I normally prefer just simple pedals myself. I don't need fancy pants and stuff going on. And what we got here, we've got more cylinders attached on there. Um, we've got a display over here where we can see the SRP pedals. Um, this is nice, and I have to say, um, I really like the idea of getting some inverted pedals, and I think I might, I might go inverted on my rig at home. I mean, uh, these look like a good job to do it. If you've got a T-slot rig, you can obviously get a T-slot and mount it across. But uh, here, you've got the, the plate and then this mounting system here, which all looks like uh, aluminium, these bars. So the pedals can then be mounted on a vertical plate, um, on an upside down plate. I find when pedals are inverted on the rigs I've used with inverted pedals, the really nice thing is, is that the pedal actuation just feels a bit more natural. Um, when you push at the bottom of the pedal, there's more leverage than at the top. And I think when pedals are inverted, even though obviously a pedal should be as smooth and consistent in force as possible, just the way that it moves through its, its range of motion, which could probably be adjusted anyway by how you set the pedal up, even if they're inverted or not. But like, for some reason, when they're vertical, it kind of feels more relaxing when I've used pedals like that, so this is the why I really want to get something like that on my rig at home. But these again just uh, feel really solid, as you'd expect. I'm sure these aren't budget pedals. Um, really nice that they've bolted this table down so we can actually do the old uh, Sim Racing Expo hand test, which is a classic way of testing pedals before buying them. You don't want to use your feet. You could try using your feet, <laughs> but it's not going to work very well. So. Uh, yeah, I quite like how these look. Um, 
very tronkous. We also have uh, these pedals here, which are the same. I think they're all basically the same sort of pedals. Here's a, here's a QR code if you want to have a look at that QR code and you can look at the pedals in more detail. Um, the nice thing with these, look at these pedal plate faces. Anodized green paint, or maybe it's, uh, I don't know what you call it, the uh, powder coating maybe. Maybe it's probably powder coated. I don't know. The finish on it is really nice though. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, I quite like the green instead of the blue, to be honest. I think I'll go, oh, I'll go for the green or the blue. I don't know. The blue's nice. This is what Simrex has turned into. It's like handbag shopping for metallic items. It's, it's, you know, we're, we're getting into uh, mechanical watch territory. Nice uh, engraved or embossed uh, SRP logo down the side. And of course, the foot catch. Uh, so that when you're moving in your sim rig, which obviously everyone is, uh, it keeps your foot in one place. Um, vital, vital in sim racing. But that's some nice. Oh, we got some purple ones here, guys. Oh my God! Oh, we have got a Lawrence. We found a secret Lawrence. What are you doing? Because I, you're in the virtual super mega game of muscle virtual tour of sim racing expo. We're in the live Lawrence muscle tour. Guys, you need to go and uh, subscribe to the Gamer Muscle. Just a little bit. Give it a look. Give it a look. He's got a mic and everything. I don't have a mic. I'm too budget. Lawrence in 3D, guys. Full virtual Lawrence. Oh, have a good one, Lawrence. See you in a bit. So, there was, there was your Lawrence interruption there, Potato Nation crew. Back to the pedals. Who cares about Lawrence? We've got pedals. we got. Orange, really nice. Orange coloured. Oh, do we got orange, red, purple, blue, or green? Which ones do we go for? I think. I mean, I, I would have orange. Right. I would say these are the. Uh, the I would say these are the Love 46 edition. These are the Muradness edition. These are the uh, Matt Malone edition. No, these would be the Emery edition. And. Uh, the green ones would be the game. Of, I'm, I'm going for the game of muscle. That's the green ones. There we go. SRP pedals. They've got a lot of time out of us. They also have a handbrake here. And I'm pulling the table off. <laughs> when you buy these pedals, <laughs> when you <laughs> when you buy these pedals, you get a SRP staff to hold your uh, sim rig. But yeah, no, that feels really nice, really good. Uh, actually, that feels surprisingly nice. You have a really good spring action, and then it uh, gets progressively harder. So, um, does this? What is this? A damper in there, or oh, an oh, astonomous, or no, pneumatic? Like, pneumatic. No, pneumatic. pneumatic. Oh, so it's a pneumatic. So it's an air, air, air cylinder. Uh, okay. Pneumatic. Okay. Cool. So uh, pneumatic cylinder, and that gives it a really nice. Uh, as you pull it, you have an initial easy pit, and then you could really sort of control that additional force. So if you're playing Richard Burr's Rally, and you're doing a proper slide into a corner, or drifting, you can, uh, you can like, feel it. And then, of course, he's just said, with the universal method of hand communication, that you can rotate it and pull it forward, so you could maybe use it as a collective on your helicopter sims or your road car sims. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, you could choose the height as well. Perfect. Can you do that hand gesture again? Yes. Do, yeah. <laughs> there we go. SRP. We'll see you guys later. Thank you for that. Next booth we have the M M E Sport Sim Sport M M E Sim Sport. These guys do real car equipment, uh, and they also do sim equipment. Uh, the stuff here is for real cars. Uh, well, this is a, this stuff here. They've got a, a forward push pull um, shifter that's from a real car, but they also do a USB box that uh, allows you to then use real the real car stuff that they've got uh, with the driving simulators, which is nice to see. Um, we have here. Hello. Take a picture. Oh sure, we're having a selfie, guys. You're in the virtual tour now. Oh, You're ah, in the video, but ah, here we go. It's virtual that's, that's, selfie experience. That's really yes, go. Let's got this live. Yeah. There you go, that's what it's like, that's the virtual YouTuber experience. Okay, so we have here, uh, they've got a handbrake, they have a sequential shifter, they have a H-pattern shifter, this table is bolted down. Of these, I had a fiddle with them yesterday, I wasn't a big fan of the handbrake or the sequential, but the MME SimSport H-pattern did feel really nice, and it's got a really nice uh, 
stiff, like very decisive action to it, so you, you're going to feel that you're in the position. Also, it's much more of a, uh, a short shift, so like a much more compacted um, pattern, if that makes sense, which I'm not completely used to, but if you are used to that, and you, you know, you're used to sort of race cars with a shorter pattern on them, uh, this could be like uh, something worth checking out. I think you can adjust the resistance as well using the side knob there. Bulletproof design. So uh, those of you in America that wanted to buy something that's not going to get destroyed, you have this option. So that's great that they're catering to the American market. Thank you. Lifetime, lifetime warranty. So it's bulletproof and lifetime. So yeah, amazing, perfect for Americans. We now have the thrill that we're going to feel with the Nuvus. I'm feeling Nuvus because you might spend too much money if you come to Simbrace and Expo. They have here a uh, aluminium chassis that's uh, just the frame here, so you can use it as a bobsled or a racing simulator cockpit, depending on what you're into. Um, they've also shown off some of their actuators for motion, uh, which are really nice, actually. Uh, really nicely packaged actuators with a really good finishing to them, so it doesn't look um, like it's just come out of a servo motor factory. It actually looks nice and cohesive and solid. Um, not sure why you need a completely solid cockpit, but maybe again if you're like a land centre, or people don't call that anymore, like a sim centre, uh, this could be like a good solution. You could you could screenshot the QR code, guys, if you want to know more about it. But uh, check out the frame. That's what opticians often say when you're buying glasses. Here's a rig here with the wheel and pedals on it, and here's some shoes. And uh, our first shoe review. We've got some Adidas trainers, very nice. Those are great shoes to wear to Sim Race and Expo, better than socks. Uh, Camus pedals, that's nice to see. I haven't actually tried these myself, so it'd be interesting to give those a go at some point. Uh, they're moving the pedals forwards and backwards using the seat slider technique, nice to see. And that's the Sparco seat sliders, nice to see there. That's what I've got on my rig at home. Uh, you know, you wouldn't in your Sim Rig want your pedals to come off by accident so it's good to use high quality seat sliders um, we have a wheel the camus wheel on there and a camus formula rim that's nice to see and they've got their own little uh, system that they use the sim racing expo challenge si system from grid finder powered by grid finder uh, they're doing a whole bunch of stuff at the moment uh, at the expo with grid finder where you can win uh, prizes by doing finding various things on the different uh, people at their show which is quite cool but uh, yeah, it's quite an interesting rig. The Nervous, uh, and we've got a coaster. One rig to, to rule them all. That looks kind of a cultish. Uh, nice to see though. Uh, personally, not my, not my. I'd, I'd go for like a basic T-slot rig myself. But there you go with the uh, actuators on the corner. You can see it in action. He's driving around the uh, Nordschleife. What looks like the BMW E30, I believe. He's, uh, He's in the, uh, I'll feel the thrill. Can I take that with me? I'm taking, I'm feeling the thrill. Thank you very much for letting me feel the thrill. Um, yeah, nice, nice with the triple screens there, 4K monitors, AC, obviously, top notch. Nordschleife are amazing. And, uh, oh, thank you, he's giving me stickers. I can't take that because my pockets will be full. I'll come back later. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, but yeah, nice, a nice rig set up there. I'm sure it's another budget solution. Wave guys, you're on the... <laughs> there we go, so... Uh, oh my God, guys, that's like four booths. Four booths and we've still got more to come. Uh, absolutely fantastic so far. A lot of Assetto Corsa. Let's go to our next booth. Battery swap, guys, did you even notice that? We are now continuing with... Uh, we have here F Sim Racer. So uh, for those of you that lose, remember to type F in chat. Can we have an F sim racing in the comments? Can we just have some F sim racing? I think it's meant to be an F. I'm not sure what they do. Bonnie, <laughs> oh Bonnie, Bonnie Academy, sorry, dyslexia. They've got a bunch of equipment, um, got some helmets. They've got a nice uh, RCC uh, seat here. This looks really nice easy to fall over and then we have some uh, we've got a track racer and uh, they're just doing some setting up here we've got the uh, D-Box 5 system on these again these are getting really popular actually because I think they're just so compact 
yet really good obviously not cheap like cheap actuators i mean what is cheap that moves uh, but still uh, you know these these d-box systems are really popular we have some more mecha cut pedals over there um, but not much to see on this booth we've got some pedals the mecha pedals the hydraulic pedals uh, the uh, the uh, handbrake here with the uh, elastonomers on it we'll have to try some of them they might be really cool load cell on everything actually use, we use some mecha cut pedals uh, on our rig for quite a while before we got the housing valve pedals and they're really nice pedals and uh, mecha cup actually or mecha do them for a really uh, competitive price so uh, that's nice to see and i'll be interested how much these go for and what they're actually like to use so uh, look out for those in the in the future i might have to get some of them on the rig guys right the next booth guys we have over here the sim racing hub booth so we meander through the crowd so the racing hub the racing hub train smart not hard unless you work in the adult entertainment industry in which case you need to train hard not smart right so we now have uh, with that band from this booth the racinghub.de they do uh, telemetry quick telemetry analysis tools uh, to help you know that you're a terrible sim racer and to uh, remind you that you're an awful person you shouldn't have bought a sim, sim rig or bothered doing driving um, at the moment I think this supports ACC and their main thing is that it's uh, nice and clear and really obvious and you can go through it and you don't need a degree in, uh, in, in, in uh, telemetry analysis to see what you've done right or wrong so that's quite nice to see with them uh, optimizing it all and you can see here this is actually working on a, on a web interface so uh, presumably you can share your telemetry online with someone else and they could tell you that you broke too late you missed the apex and again why are you doing this hobby you idiot but uh, the racing hub that's actually quite cool to see and that does actually look like one of the tidier interfaces you've got the pedal input the steering the speed over understeer what's what's understeer why would you have that you, you, you always want oversteer we also have here the uh, they've got a boot they've got a rig in their booth it's where they're collecting data these guys don't know they're collecting data we've got a little uh, rig there with the fanatec uh, dd pro D csl dd oh, there's too many dd worlds to remember the names of they are using acc and uh she's driving away with the fanatec v3 pedals there right next booth guys let's keep on going absolutely speed demoning it through here it's quite a lot of stuff at sim racing expo so uh, fascinating seatbelts this could be quite a long video we have now the vrs booth which uh, you might know because they do pedals they do setups we get fist bump there from the man and, we, uh, and they've got steering wheels and of course they are doing all the we're just going to run straight past you there he's been ignored <laughs> they also do the uh, the ren sport um, partner at the moment so if you remember watching esl r1 or you see uh, any ren sport stuff in the public that's all using vrs wheels pedals and rigs and these rigs are really cool actually they put a pc in the bottom of it so the driver can get their bottom cooked by a pc you have a warm bottom uh, when you're on these and they've also got a go xlr on the side for you to control your audio levels i'm really getting in the way and ruining their display here um, they've got a hot lap challenge at the moment that they're running with uh, all the uh, speedy boys and girls in there uh, we're not we're not on it and even if i tried we'd be right at the bottom so uh, that's that's where we belong sorry moritz is leading so we need to go and cripple moritz so he can't win uh, but the uh, so the vrs rigs um, i say the actual uh, wheelbase uses the small mage um, then they obviously use their own control software really nice wheelbase the uh, VRS pedals, really good price competitive pedals and we've got an opportunity here for our second shoe review. We've got some more Adidas trainers. So far Adidas, that's what you bring to Sim Racing Expo. But with the VRS pedals, you uh, interestingly, you, they, they, you can use the Lestonomers on them but they, go, they use more spring systems on it and um, you then can choose different springs obviously for the feel that you want and you would think oh a spring doesn't feel the same as a, a, a lastonomer and it, it doesn't feel exactly the same but you can actually really uh, dial them in and it can feel surprisingly 
similar to an astronomer's, which you just wouldn't expect from a from a spring, to be honest. I am not the biggest fan of these pedals myself, but uh, the e-sport drivers are absolutely hammering on them. They're lasting well and they are very popular and, as I say, very good value for money. I do really like the uh, the wheelbase, though. Uh, the small mage is an absolute legend. Uh, in the OSW scene and a legend with the VRS. This motor is super smooth and with the VRS control software and tools uh, delivers really nice, precise force feedback. And their Formula Rim, which they just brought out recently, it's like a GT3 Formula Rim, uh, also feels really, really nice. All the buttons, the, the gear shifting, super solid. This guy here's got their force feedback ramped up to the max. Uh, I'm probably ruining his lap time by getting in the way there. But uh, if you want to, guys, you can sign up to Ren Sport. You can get the Ren Sport app, and then you can uh, get into the beta and uh, do some Ren Sport in yourselves at home. But definitely check out VRS. Really nice guys behind that company. And also, don't know if I mentioned it, aside from doing the uh, car, uh, the, the pedals, the wheel rim, and uh, the wheelbase, they also do setup. So if you do iRacing, jumping competitive online set uh, setups training check out VRS they don't really have much of their training stuff on display there but uh, yeah the, the VRS setups are really good in iRacing uh, use, the, use the Game of Muscle VRS setup link <laughs> affiliate link I don't have one but you should use it uh, and what you should also use is sen sense it sense it guys uh, because this is a uh, seat system that uses tactile transducers uh, to let you sense what's going on in the sim rig. We see we've got the nice Sabelle uh, rig here. If you saw our video on the channel a few weeks ago, we were in uh, Turin for the launch of these Sabelle rigs. We'll uh, look at these more because I think Sabelle is also at Sim Race and Expo, so we'll do a proper look at them later. But uh, they've got a VRS wheel on there, VRS pedals and their seat system which so has give us we'll do it we'll do it later we're doing a run through here but, but so what they have is um, the uh, picks up the game uh, telemetry from the game and then it's plug and play and you can then feel what's going on with the vehicle dynamics the uh, curbing <coughs> load and uh, you know you have all those options that you'd expect from a uh, sort of vibration haptic system and then they, they're looking to integrate it into seats and potentially have maybe a, a system you could just buy and stick on your own rig at home yourself but uh, it's really interesting to see see it here hear it sense it uh, take immersion to the next level there's their QR code if you want to photograph your screen like a granny check them out uh, next booth we have all the way from China we have the PXN crew and uh, they've got the PXN wheelbases here I think uh, this is like one of the only DD wheels to Apart, well, apart from the uh, Fanatec C, uh, CSL DD or DD Pro uh, that works on the PlayStation uh, PXN. Not spent too much time with this, I can't really comment on the feel of it, but uh, the nice thing is, I do know that they're very uh, price competitive, so we're starting to see more people come into the hardware space. Um, they're also doing pedals as well, but we start to see more people come into the hardware space which is going to really help lower the price of uh, higher end equipment direct drive equipment uh, which is i think is a really good thing the more pressure that's put on companies to keep the prices down the uh, the, the better it's going to be for the consumer whatever lowers the prices with good equipment is a good thing so we have here their boxes on display they're offering uh, the v12 ddl the pxn wds the pxn v12 dds the PXN V12CW and the PXN DDHM uh, pedals. Uh, I don't know why, how they've chosen the naming for them, but uh, there you go, that's their offerings. I did actually briefly use this at Gamescom, and I will say the wheel rim actually felt quite nice and solid, and with ACC, for the brief amount of time we had on it, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't mind-blowingly good, but it wasn't terrible either. So, uh, PXN represented is a close for their equipment. They've also got a handbrake here, which is not on a rig, so I can't really see what it feels like. And they've got some uh, cheaper pedals. Uh, totally not inspired by Thrustmaster's design. Uh, 
totally not inspired by Fanatec design, but you know, uh, great to see. Great to see more coffee. I've just destroyed. <laughs> I've just vandalised the table. Oh no, what are we doing? Oh, sorry, PXN. They're never going to talk to me. Oh, and I'm going to tidy it up. Sorry, PXN. Right, there we go. Fix that. Hello. <laughs> so there you go. Oh, we've got a nice. Uh, let's have a feel of this. Oh, actually feels quite nice. I've got a, a wheel, a wheel rim, which you can mount anything. Quite, I actually quite like this. Uh, this kind of like soft rubber stuff. I think it's particularly good for sim racing wheels. It could be when you get really sweaty hands. It could be a bit slidey. But uh, actually, I think that's pretty nice. You could maybe use it upside down as well, Batmobile style. <laughs> actually, it does look a bit like the Bat single uh, symbol. Uh, yeah, PXN guys. We then have the most important booth here at Sim Racing Expo. The, the, the most. This is the real German booth. This is the uh, kitchen, the kitchen kebab booth where you can pick yourself up a, a, a German Duna kebab. Uh, now, sadly, sadly, uh, there's a queue, so I can't get a kebab, but I will, we will have one at some point, don't worry. We've got to try the kebab when I see a kebab, we've got to have one. Uh, the, uh, the kebab prices, I think it's seven euros for a kebab, might be eight euros, but a Coke here is five euros. The, the drink to food price ratio doesn't make any sense. I don't know what that's about, but uh, that finalizes that side of Sim Racing Expo, the uh, what I like to call the kebab side of Sim Racing Expo. Let's um, go over and have a look here at uh, the other side of that first, the first side of the kebab side of Sim Racing Expo. We have here some bean bags for people to sit on. That's nice, and some Bavarian, uh, is it Bavarian SimTech, I believe, uh, wheel rims and devices. Let's see if we can get a bit closer here. Squeezing on through, so there we go. Bavarian Simtech, who make really, really nice uh, wheel rims. You can see the wheel rim here. Really, really nice. Uh, they, they feel really solid. They might have a stand where we could actually poke and prod them. Uh, and they also are using here the uh, tailored uh, tailored rigs, uh, which are actually these are really nice rigs. Quite a big booth here. I think this is like a partnership with BMW as well. Um, See if we can get a close up of a rig for you guys. Well, I'm just going to get in there and annoy these people just to show you. So, with these rigs, the really nice thing with them is that you've got this colouring on them, which I think is quite nice. They do kind of look a bit, uh, they do look a bit industrial. I don't mind that myself. They are quite narrow, but it's T slot as well, so it's absolutely rock solid. The one thing that I saw in these tailored rigs that really stands out from other rigs on the market are these, uh, these screws here which you can unscrew them and then they just go into the t-slot and uh, when you unscrew all this you can then slide the chair backwards or you can slide forwards and backwards but you can also slide the wheel uh, forwards and backwards which is really nice uh, that you can adjust it all moving the wheel arm for the wheel depth is something that's a real pain in the ass when it comes to uh, racing simulators so just being able to unscrew these and move them uh, is really cool. Uh, I don't know if we could get more of that on T-Slot rigs or if you could just, you could just do this yourself, I guess. But uh, this bracket, I think, makes it easier to do because it holds it all in line and stable. Um, you notice if you uh, have T-Slot rigs yourself, uh, it's just slightly wonky, it all binds up, but uh, this moves really quite nicely. Hopefully we can uh, show that on camera somewhere else. But we also have here some motorbikes here. We have uh, a MotoGP stand where they're showing off uh, bike racing and they've got a hot lap challenge where you can win yourself a M1000RR, which is, uh, it's got two wheels, so it's a bike. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty knowledgeable when it comes to bike. There's wheel one, there's wheel two, uh, that's where the driver sits and uh, these are called handlebars. Um, I basically this is just a quick way to kill yourself so uh, I stay away from bikes to terrify me if I found out I was uh, gonna pass away in a week's time I would get a bike and I'd just make it quicker but uh, looks really nice nice to see more bike stuff nice to see bike representation at Sim Racing Expo 
Um, unfortunately, they don't have a motorbike motion rig. Which I have seen one or two of them. They're quite big and cumbersome. They don't have one of them, but uh, maybe in the future that'll be really cool to see. Proper motorbike motion rig and proper motorbike game where you can feel what's going on rather than just using PlayStation controllers. Uh, here, we have more of their tailored rigs uh, in the blue and uh, also red, but the uh, I say the blue uh, colouring looks really nice on it. Um, I think they're quite nice rigs. The, uh, the Assetek uh, SimSport wheelbase there, glowing away uh, with the Bavarian SimTech wheel rim also glowing away. Really nice. Just looks like proper fancy. Obviously, it's not budget equipment again, but uh, you get what you pay for. In this case, you pay for a disco for your hands. And who doesn't want a disco for the hands? The uh, Aston Martin here, GT3 car, that's nice. I can remind you that this is what you're never going to get to do in real life because you can't afford it. That's why you're doing sim racing. But, you know, it does look nice. Bit, uh, not not my pick in uh, in our GT3 cars. I'm not sure what my pick is. Um, probably the Ferrari or the Porsche is what I go for. Uh, there we go. We've got more stuff over there. More Bavarian SimTech. Nice crowd of people. Nice uh, queue of people. So now we have uh, over here the quiet part. We can take a little break from this side of Sim Racing Expo. And we've got the uh, food area and we've got some skateboard ramps because and as you can see the sim racers cannot get enough they all want to be on the skateboard ramp who doesn't want to do skateboarding uh, do you think we can we're gonna get on one let's have a little let's have a little skateboard here right let's die are we ready <laughs> right here we go guys I don't know how we're gonna do this with the GoPro right here we go here we go Oh, there we go. Stole. We stole it. We're going. We're off. And the security guard's giving us a look there. He's not a very good security guard because we've, we've just run off with a skateboard. He doesn't. He doesn't care. He's, he's just, he just gave us a bit of stank eye. He's like, ah, oh, we'll let that crazy bold guy keep the skateboard. Why not? Uh, we also have some clothing here. Um, some Akaday aid. Um, help across the board. It, maybe it's like a. A charity based clothing company I'm not sure let's go back down the other side of the uh, kebab aisle to see if we've missed anything there and uh, continue this virtual tour I hope you guys are enjoying this heart pounding action um, we've got a beer tree the beer train coming through there um, and let's see what's on this side no, moving through so many people here though this year really nice to see uh, a, a really busy uh, sim racing expo there's uh, way more people um at this year's sim racing expo than uh, compared to last year's um so i don't know if sim racing's got bigger i don't know if dortmund's just a, a more convenient location for people to get to but uh it's pretty crazy sim racing uh, looks like it's getting popular which is rather worrying and uh, an indictment for, for the future of humanity we have here the peak this is it this is peak car this is what we're talking about we have a beetle in the flesh absolutely beautiful Bosch racing team look at that look they're using a uh, a leather it looks like an OMP just said to again I'm telling you guys all the best people it's, it's not but it's very similar to it all the best cars every every best race driver uses the OMP Trecento you, you know proper car this I don't know what engine that's got in it but that probably sounds amazing probably really fun to uh, watch and even more fun to drive what's over here we have um, some virtual reality get in there let's have a little squeeze in through here and uh, so we have here a CSL Elite we've got a uh, Oculus uh, CV2 uh, headset one of the Oculus Rift headsets using the old trackers are going vintage and he's playing Project Cars 2 and poning it around the Nord Slifery on this motion rig not seen this rig before not one I recognise but a seat mover so we've got some tilt and we've got some movement going on and uh, yeah nice to see him VR he's probably having a really good time uh, driving that Porsche around the Nord Slifer. you can't go wrong in VR at the end of the day VR puts you 
into the car you know it gets you right in there and uh, nothing else is as immersive as VR for, for really making you feel like you're actually in the vehicle um, here so we have a, a really cool project here which is hidden away um, which is a open source uh, solution for direct drive wheels uh, it might look like an improvised explosive device with exposed uh, solenoids uh, so you can uh, or transistors or I don't know what word we're using you know the word I don't I've, I've gone brain dead I'm, I'm talking too much you can touch them and get an electric shock which adds to the immersion of sim racing um, so look at this cabling firehazard.com but it makes it you could drive 1960s formula cars and enjoy the risk of spontaneous combustion which only adds to the simulation value so this box basically is an, an open source project here we go there's the uh, QR code if you want to know more about it but uh, basically you could use this with any like uh, um, direct drive motor or motor solution and uh, yeah, proper OSW, actual legitimate open source uh, direct drive force feedback solution, which is really nice to see. This is like, you know, forget the commercial stuff. This is about the passion of uh, proper sim racing. And a uh, nice no, look at that monitor stand. This is where it's at. I want to see more of this at Sim Racing Expo. Proper LCD, you know, none of this overpriced, modern, fancy, polished rubbish. This is legit. This is, this is actually pure sim racing. I'm not even joking. We can have a little close-up of the controller board here. There you go. Look at that. And uh, is there another board that goes on top as well? Yeah, this is uh, this board goes on top. There you go. Nice. So anyone can get this if they want to build their own servo motor direct drive solution and uh, do it authentically. None of this pre pre-built, pre-bought rubbish. Proper real sim racing there proper engineering and from proper sim racing to epic real slot car racing look at this they've got headlights they've got multiple oh he's he's blocking in blue flag blue flag oh they've crashed they've crashed proper scale electrics going on here you can choose what lane you go in you can uh, you've got full timing screen we did not have this as kids when I was younger. Uh, we were glad to have two lanes and an ability to do absolutely nothing other than to put toy soldiers on it and melt them. But that's all we needed. It's so exciting, the spectators have uh, passed out from excitement here. Look at that. The uh, spectators are, are loving it. Let's get a close-up of a car coming around. You ready? Look at the speed and pace of this. Here we go, here comes one, look, he's over the top, and there we go, oh, oh, look at this, I mean, look at this layout, it's got, it's got down bits, it's got up bits, it's got tunnels, it's, it's like, it's, this is, not, I'm not even joking here, this is better than your modern Formula One race tracks, and it's a toy, there we go, try and follow it, amazing, if I, if I was like a millionaire with a huge house, I would build one of these myself, and I'd just sit there playing this and uh, I'd probably build realistic scenery around it. Uh, there's a bunch of kids playing on this that are probably, uh, I bet they look about four or five years old, so they're probably F4 races in I racing and they're having an absolute blast crashing into each other and shouting abuse at each other, so definitely I racing. But scale electrics, guys, you can't go wrong. Uh, what do we have here? We don't stop, guys, we're absolutely on fire. We have here. Grid Finder, the Grid Finder booth. Sim racing stories every week. They've got a podcast that we will be on eventually. And they also have uh, their Grid Finder software. Uh, they've got an events system. And uh, I don't know what they're currently doing here. They're just setting things up, testing things out. Uh, they've got some, uh, they've got an Acetec wheel. They've got a La Prima Formula wheel. They've got a VR headset. I think it's the, they've got the Vario headset awesome headset if you want like uh, really high resolution um, VR uh, it has eye tracking on it it has uh, I think it has automatic IPD on it and uh, Vario just recently uh, half the price of it so if you wanted a super high resolution VR headset uh, Vario might be an option for you uh, it also has cooling in it as well so uh, yeah you've got you've got everything with the Vario and uh, again VR puts you in the car so uh, nice to 
to see Gridfinder partnering with Vario there to show off the VR. And uh, that is that is the kebab lane done, guys. Uh, we've got the. Uh, hello. Oh, he's giving us. A, we're getting a drink here. What is this? I'm a bit of a prototype fanatic. This, of course, is the Assetek booth, and uh, they have a huge, absolute monstrous booth here, with them, of course, showing off car tyres, and uh, they're, of course, showing off their uh, steering wheels. They've got a whole selection of steering wheels here. They've also playing the music, which is fantastic for copyright. They've got full uh, wall of Assetek wheels, some, I think these two might be their newer ones. Uh, Assetek are bringing a new wheel out that they're showing off at Simrace and Expo. We'll be checking that out more closer later. But uh, look at that wall of wheel rims. All the lights uh, shining. This is a really convoluted and elaborate way of having a, a, a disco wall. But it looks cool. What you could do is you could put plastic over the front of this and then have it on the floor and have a Assetek wheel disco floor which would be awesome uh, of course you've got the uh, Forte here with the uh, Invicta base and the uh, Formula rim we need to give this a bit of a proper go uh, this year last year we didn't really try it out I did quite like the feel of their DD wheels quite nice uh, very similar to the Simicube in feel super smooth super detailed quick release is nice you can see they've got the rig set up here we've got the uh, nice little T-slot rigs got the uh, wheel set up and uh, the uh, pedals I will say personally I'm not a fan of the uh, Assetek pedals um, I think they work fine but uh, the brake feel for me is not my sort of thing uh, a bit too overly stiff and not adjustable enough for my personal preference but the uh, the, the actual DD motor and their wheel rims all feel absolutely fantastic I mean this feels really nice um, so they could spend more time with it to be able to do a, a proper review of it. But the Assetek booth, look at this, we've got uh, a, a huge LCD LED screen with them uh, showing some uh, driving. I don't know what track that is, I can't tell in those short clips. I think they're doing a Mugello hot lap challenge as well. We've got uh, a Seto Corsa running again, an absolutely fantastic choice of simulator, AC, probably the best well not probably objectively the best sim for being able to try force feedback wheels and actually feel the details so that's good look at that they've actually set it up nicely with the screen uh, and the car in car height so the driver is just seen over the steering wheel from their position uh, which is nicely done it makes sense that's something that a lot of uh, a lot of rigs often get wrong is the actual uh, the height of the wheel and the in onboard camera position which obviously for an event like this it's actually quite hard to set everything up and get it done in a rush uh, so it's nice that they've really put attention to detail in setting this up and making it all look nice and all make sense look at this we've got uh, I think that's the Porsche uh, not the Porsche it's the Mercedes uh, RSS mod 
again in a Seto in this uh, really crazy cockpit. It's like a front half of a car. Um, the business club with a fake windscreen, but that's got this, the actual SIM screen behind it. That's actually really cool, to be honest. Uh, real car tires on it, <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. And uh, we've got the, the bodywork clips, so you can <laughs> probably pull it apart quite easily. And uh, I don't know why there's a spring on the back of that, but uh, oh, it's because it's got a seatbelt tensioner. Well, I can't actually see it. it. Doesn't seem to be actively moving or anything. I really don't know what's going on with this. We've got some suspension there as well. It's a very uh, bizarre setup, I'd say. So, uh, but. An interesting way of setting a simulator up. They're really cool. Um, what else have they got here? We've got a, oh, a Formula student car. Let's have a look at that. Check this Formula student car out. We have. Uh, look at that. This, this is a proper petrol one. None of that electric rubbish. Look how much smaller it is than the electric one. No, actually, I think it's bigger. But I, I really like these. I, I just think uh, Formula students should have uh, more of a uh, profile, be more like shown off. They've got the uh, Asatec quick release <laughs> on, on the wheel rim. And this is the thing is, a lot of the sim racing equipment, it's, it, it's, you can use it in real cars, you know, it's that solid. Uh, the, uh, do you remember the McMurty uh, Hoover car at uh, Goodwood? That was using Fanatec buttons and shifters on it. So that's how high quality sim racing equipment is now. Um, but look at that, it's absolutely mental from Asatec. We're going to check some stuff out, we'll do another video on that uh, later. Let's see what's over here. We've got Pro Simu and they've got some, uh, some rigs. We've got Morissetto, beautiful. He's driving the F2004 car, which is a, one of the most fun cars to drive in Assetto Corsa. little sort of formula cockpit it's like nice and cut down so you get the uh, the nice thing with this cockpit is you get the formula the feeling of being in a cockpit without it taking up too much space and also great job by whoever this company is the build sim of actually putting the monitors near the driver rather than miles away so you really do, you genuinely do with these kind of cockpits you sat in a formula position but you genuinely do get like a feeling of being in a formula car from having the rig around you it's not just visuals um, it looks stupid until you try one of these things out and it's actually it does have quite an impact even if you were driving it in VR you feel like you're in a cockpit um, so that's nicely set up we've got the uh, we've got an Asher McLaren wheel rim on there really good stuff and I believe they've got a Simu Cube. I don't know what pedals they're running, we can't see, but uh, that's a really great rig. So uh, they're running housing bell, housing bell pedals, nice. And we have uh, some more rigs over here, a little look at the bargain, uh, bargain basement rigs here. We've got the uh, T1000 3M SV for 3,832 euros and five. <laughs> Why just round it up guys, no one's gonna care. Could even be like rounded up to 3,900. No, at that point, nobody cares. Uh, we have a traction loss system. We have a uh, Pro Simu wheel, uh, Simu cube, housing bell pedals, and they are playing uh, Dirt Rally 2 on that. They've got the uh, handbrake and the uh, H-pan shifter there, so that will actually be uh, this will be an awesome rig to try out. So we'll definitely have to give that a bash. And then now we've got the T7 Pro, uh, price without peripherals, uh, twenty-five thousand euros. See, they've rounded it up. You don't care. You're like, oh, it's uh, cheaper than that other one because it's just zeros. It's just zeros. Oh, there we go. Full setup. 41,999 and 60, no, just, just make it 42, oh, I, <laughs> I don't know why, ah, oh, that's without VAT and without professional software, but uh, traction loss on the front, traction loss on the rear, uh, four point actuators, um, Acetec pedals on there, 
Simucube wheel, it's a Bavarian sim racing formula wheel, I believe. Uh, driving again, Assetto, beautiful Assetto Corsa. Look at that, triple 4K monitors as well. Top notch stuff. Nicely dialed in though, so the nice thing about Sim Racing Expo now is that uh, the rigs don't move too much. Um, in the past with Sim Racing Expo and other trade shows with Sim Racing equipment, they'd often have the rigs moving all over the place uh, rather than be focused on the details. And you can see with these guys, uh, they've, they've really uh, dialed it in so it's moving enough for you to feel what the car's doing and communicating the suspension and not making it into a roller coaster ride. So it, with the motion rigs, it's more about having the detail rather than going, being thrown around and throwing up. So it's nice to see that they've set that up nicely. This rig's uh, not got the traction loss on it. The T1000, 18,162 euros for, for this here. Uh, bargain, absolutely, you'll, you'll find this in your local Lidl's middle middle uh, aisle probably next week well uh, we definitely have to check more of the pro simu stuff out because it's actually that looks like really nicely set up equipment and it's the kind of stuff i'd uh, never afford to be able to buy the nice thing about sim racing expo is that you get to try equipment out that you're never gonna otherwise use <laughs> even someone like me that has tons of filthy equipment uh, be cool to try that out uh, right look at this guys we got some uh, prototype wheels here. Uh, I don't know. This is Con Conspect. That's a little bit of an unfortunate brand name. Uh, but they're partnered with Republic of Gamers and some other people. R&B Racing, Climax Racing, Uno, Uno Reverse Racing Team, Conspect. Sounds like something that happens when you visit a jail and you've got to walk past the cells, like one of those American 80s prison films. Oh no, I've been conspitted. Uh, yeah, nice, nice formula rim there. We've got some nice pedals. Look at this 3D matrix. We have a handbrake with a, looks like a hydraulic system on it as well. That's quite cool. Let's have a look in this uh, little room with a tarpaulin on top. And then uh, we have a nice, super mega curved screen here uh, again a seto corsa guys glorious a seto corsa with the uh, is it running the f2004 car i believe uh, sounds like the f2004 parked um just a projector here they'll be using a mapping software to map this image it'll look like the field of view will look a bit silly from this perspective but when you're sat in the car let's get a shot actually this guy's just coming out i'll just do a little shot so you can see Oh, you got three, so you've got three projectors actually, one over there, one over there, and one here. So this one's pointing there, that one's pointing over there, that one's pointing over there. Let me just do a quick shot here, and you guys can see the field of view makes sense from the driver's point of view. Uh, whereas when you look at it from the distance, it looks like the FOV police I'm going to have to be called. Uh, actually, you can see here, if I block this shadow, you can see how the, uh, the screens emerge with the projectors and you have to use software that lines up the projector so there's no gap for the driver. This is kind of a, more similar to the kind of system you see at the really high-end training facilities. Um, and I, honestly, these systems are absolutely awesome. It's, I still prefer VR, don't get me wrong. You can get systems like this that use 3D glasses that are very comfortable, and I think they actually do beat out VR. But uh, 2D systems like this, VR still beats I think but then you know with this uh, there's a convenience there's comfort to it uh, you can see why training centers would go with this because you can have a driver coach just sat next to the driver and talk to them and oh, all this other stuff with accessibility it's a little bit awkward with VR but uh, here we go look at this <laughs> monster field of view there you get a really good sense of speed when you're driving these rigs and from the driver's point of view the, uh, you can see there that the uh, body of the uh, cockpit lines up with the wheels. It's really cool. I, I love stuff like that. Older VR and cave systems are like that. And that's really nice to see here. We also have these smaller Formula cockpits look nice for those who dare to uh, get a lot of debt. Uh, got another, they've set the screen up quite high again, which is nice. Look at that molded uh, seat there. Pretty cool. 
nice little formula cockpit. Actually pretty tidy. Again, as I say, the problem with these is the rigs look awesome, but then the bloody monitor stand ruins the design of the cockpit. But uh, quite nice. I, you can have like three of these in your basement and uh, race your friends, like a classic arcade. We've got a smaller formula rig here with a Fanatec DD and a some hydraulic CPP light but they've got uh, vibration motors on top which is quite cool uh, you know like AC motors that rotate with a weight so uh, you'll be able to feel uh, traction loss or however you set it up in the telemetry or what software you use that's cool though I've not actually seen many pedals using this uh, it's just kind of like the rumble motor that you'd have in uh, you know in your game controllers uh, some of the Fanatec wheels have that but not many pedals use, use that type of solution. Um, I think the Club Sport V2 pedals and V3s have them, but you can't really notice them. So uh, that'd be interesting to see what they feel like. I think personally I'll go with tactile transducers on, uh, on pedals, but then they're quite bulky, so quite a nice setup there. That, that was the Conspit booth. Uh, a nice showing. I really like that projector setup. But uh, there's, there's conspit for you guys. Let's continue on. And we now have the S B S S3 S S35 S S35. There's their QR code if you want to. Uh, that's the biggest QR code you've ever seen. Uh, if you want to uh, get details. We've got some cube controller wheels here. Um, really nice. F core, 560. Uh, F, the F Pro for 1019. Uh, these cube control wheels do feel awesome, and the shifters are really nice on them if you've never used them. You can adjust everything on them, obviously. Buttons feel really nice. You know, all nicely lit up, as you'd expect for, you know, it's not exactly bargain basement. And then we have the monster Porsche display, which is uh, 589 euros, the grid Porsche dash. Um, you know, if you've, if you've not got the best of eyes and you want another huge dash to put in front of your sim rig, see what's going on, uh, that could be the dash for you. Personally, if you're sat here, like this is probably the distance, it's got a lot of information there, but it's a lot of information. I personally would rather go for this sort of thing, which are flag boxes. Uh, so at home I use a 3D SIM gear flag box. But you can get this for like 70 euros. Uh, this is the Dentsu Flag V2.5. Really nice casing they put on it. Looks really nice and professional. You just put these in with, uh, use them with SIM hub, and you can show the gear you're in, the, if you need to shift, flags. You can get multiples of these flag boxes and uh, that could tell you the vital information um, and then when it comes to these types of screens I actually personally prefer much more minimal ones with the LEDs for shifting and then really obvious details for your delta bar in particular and then uh, your best lap and stuff but only like a couple of things keep it as simple as possible because um, I find it so hard to read these details I'd rather just use the stuff on the screen in the game if that makes sense but, uh, you know, some people like those dash displays. There's plenty of options on the market now from uh, cheaper 3D printed stuff to uh, officially licensed Porsche and uh, what have you. So it's nice that you've got more options there. Here we have a, a Gomez Sim Racing GSI X29, 700 euros. Uh, Gomez Sim Racing, nice, uh, nice buttons, you know, nice and solid. Go and watch uh, Gomez uh, Sim Racing Twitch. You can watch them putting the worlds together. I really like this one. This is a Formula Pro, uh, 1,400 euros. Really nice feeling shifters. Looks awesome. Some of you might say this looks like the color scheme's terrible, but uh, I actually I actually think this looks really nice. I get the Love 46 vibes. The whole purple and blue color scheme. <laughs> Get a 46 one of these guys. Oh, we, we broke it by touching it. Okay, this one's discounted now. <laughs> uh, we got the GSI uh, GT32 Max, uh, 1,250. 
you know. Personally, again, this is me just complaining, I don't like the screen on the wheel, because when I'm turning, which I do all the time too much because I can't drive a car properly, I soar away like a lumberjack in a thunderstorm. I can't read what's on the screen when it's small details and I'm turning, so I'd rather have the screen separate, but uh, if you like it all in the same thing, I think with Formula wheels, where, you know, if you've got this up high, you need the screen on the wheel because you can't have a screen anywhere else because your view's blocked, it makes sense. Uh, this looks nice as well, actually. Uh, you know, proper solid bits of equipment. But yeah, I prefer the screen not being on the wheel. But there's some uh, nice wheel rims for you to gander at. We've got even more here. We've got Simcor. Yeah, feel, it feels nice. 89 euro. That's actually quite cool. It's a standard sort of D-shaped wheel rim. Obviously, it's not with the button box, but that feels really nice. It's got that um, divot on the side here, which... Um, if, so my, one of my favourite wheels that I own is the OMP Trecento, which is a, a circular wheel, and this divot means that your hand, when you hold onto it, your hand rests into it, your palm goes into it, which is awesome for then, um, you don't have to squeeze it to hold onto it, so you can run higher force feedback, and the wheel just feels stable, and you're sort of more pushing down with your hand rather than having to grip, so that's nice. Uh, nice shape to this one as well. What's this? The... Uh, Asher Racing button box and a uh, hundred pound for the for the wheel rim. Not my favourite shape, but feels pretty good. You know, nothing to shout home about. We've seen this before. The Asher Racing F64, one thousand pounds or one thousand euros, probably more in pounds. Really nice bit of a kit. Uh, absolutely rock solid. The Asher, the Asher Racing uh, Formula rims are really really good. Uh, Asher Martin as well great guy so it's nice to see the Asher wheels like spreading about seeing these on loads of rigs now I'm a big I'm a big fan of them I think they kind of look a bit basic in some ways and they kind of they don't look the fanciest but when I've used them they feel really solid and uh, legit um, and they're not cheap but they're not crazy crazy expensive um, they've got some more stuff on display here we've got some quick releases we got, oh, these are actually really good. Small rig, guys. I have hundreds of these. Really recommend them. You, you basically can attach them to tripods. You can get little clamps and you can attach them to your rig and then you can mount stuff to it. Uh, small small rig and there's some other companies, that some knockoff Chinese ones. These are really, really good, especially the ones with the uh, clamp. It's because you, you just attach it to one end and then you've just got like a camera screw and uh, you saw it. <laughs> It's really small rig, guys. I'm a huge fan. I have, I literally have like 10 of these, probably like 10 of the other grips. Uh, worth actually, you can get some good knockoff brand ones, but the small rig are good, quite like the uh, joints and the uh, clamps are generally better quality, so it can be better going for small rig rather than off brands. There are some good off brand ones, but small rigs are a safe bet if you're just going to get one for your rig or something. We've got some Simcore displays here, hardcore Simcore. Uh, sounds like some like rave <laughs> Simcore genre of music. Uh, that's nice. Really, I actually really like the uh, the casing on this. is really nice. Like anodized again, anodized metal feels really solid. USB C, glorious. Um, they'll be just powered by the USB, which is nice as well. Attached with, use that with SIM hub. This is, it feels really nice. It's a shame that that would be bolted to a rig and then you wouldn't really be able to appreciate it. Feels, feels almost like a 90s <laughs> or Star Trek, uh, an original Star Trek film prop or something. This actually feels really nice in the hand. Uh, yeah, just sad that would be attached to a rig and not appreciated. Really nicely uh, beveled actually at the edges. Good, good, nice quality. So, SRS, I think it is, they're basically a shop for sim racing hardware. There you go. Uh, so that's why they've got a whole bunch of equipment here. And they've got a uh, BMW. Is that an M2? I'm, I'm sorry, guys, I'm embarrassingly bad with my car knowledge. Uh, look at that inside there. Everything's taken out because it is indeed a race car. This is why road cars sound terrible because they have sound deadening in them. And when you go in a race car, everything's stripped out of it. And so you get this really nice sort of uh, audio chamber when you, if you ever get the chance to drive a race car, um, 
the sound you get is really like reverberating, which adds a lot to the, uh, the the sense of what's going on with driving. Look at this! Look at this! Who who are you? Who's this? I don't know. A, a, a filthy esports right, driver. Man. Can we take a picture? Oh, no. <laughs> get him back. <laughs> Right, he's, he's invaded it. Go and uh, watch him on. Uh, follow. What's your Twitch channel? Uh, just my normal name. Morris. So, and uh, no, it's Morris Lerner. But yeah. is that the Twitch? Is Morris? Oh, okay. Yeah, I can't do that. It's too hard for me. And then uh, you can watch this guy destroy at ESLR one as well. And he is actually this guy is one of the few uh, esports drivers. It's a massive fan of iRacing's tire model. You're it's the best, right? It's the best tyre model, yeah? Of course, no, I yeah. hate it. Yeah. Guys, don't play. No. It's a good game, but tyres are shit. Oh, it's an eSports driver, guys! Say it on camera, that's it! Oh, no, this is going to be a peak. This is the spike of the video. I racing, you wanted me to say it. No, <laughs> I didn't. Take that out. It's a nice chat with you. I'll see you later. Awesome. Did he just say on camera that iRacing's tyre model isn't very good? Oh my god, he's like one of the best esports drivers, and probably in the top five at least. Right, that's it. That's vi this video is getting uh, hacked and removed by the iRacing Massive. Look at this, guys. After that bombshell, um, look at this. Look who we've got here. It's the Sabel crew, all the way from Turin, Italy. We were with these guys just a few weeks ago. I travel the world, uh, cultured man that I am. Um, and we got to experience these rigs as they launched them, which was awesome. Um, I mean, awesome being in Italy. I know you guys weren't there, so it just sounds like me being a dirty influencer. <laughs> but it was awesome for me. You know, I, okay, you can slag me off in the comments. But these rigs, uh, they had one over there which we talked about briefly, but they're, they're really nice, it's rock solid T slot rigs, uh, but really nicely finished. Um, these are not the cheapest of sim rigs, obviously, um, but you do notice the sort of detail in the finish of it, the paint job on it. You know, if, if I had like, if I was going for a T-slot sim rig and I'm like, right, I want T-slot, but I want possibly one of the best looking T-slot rigs that's as nicely finished as possible, this is probably what I'd go for. Uh, not the best value for money, but if you're like, willing to pay for that attention to detail t-slot that's what i go for um really like though more than the rig i mean at the end of the day you can be happy with any t-slot rig let's be honest all the t-slot rigs out there are absolutely fantastic even the super cheapo ones uh, and to be honest i also really like any t-slot because it's got t in it the thing that's about showed off though they won't like me saying this the rigs were nice but the thing that they really showed off uh, that was really good, especially good, is this formula seat they do, um, which is so comfortable, um, really solid, but really, really comfortable, like the padding on it is absolutely superb. Um, I don't think in sim racing there's a more comfortable formula seat on the market than this. Think, I don't think he's got a price yet. I believe it's going to be around about 500 euros though, which is quite a lot, but for a high-end chair, that's not crazy money. If you're, you know, if you wanted a top top end formula seat, these sort of formula seats are often a lot more expensive. It's obviously not a real car formula seat, but uh, for sim racing, absolutely fantastic. Uh, just really solid as well when you're getting in now. I've noticed with a lot of formula seats or a lot of more minimal seats that you get with sim racing, a lot of the time they um, they like flex a lot. They're not completely solid, but this is like absolutely like so rigid. Um, so this is the uh, Sabel product <laughs> that I would go for myself. Uh, they've got me, guys. Sabel have got me. You can't trust a word of dog because I've done a sponsored video with them, but I do really genuinely like the uh, Formula Seat. I like the sim rigs, but they're quite expensive uh, Formula Seats where it's at. I do need to try this out though, uh, which is their, I uh, can't remember the, the name of it specifically, but they've got three. They've got the Formula Seat, they've got the GT, and then they've got this one, which has the inverted pedals on it. Uh, and this inverted pedal tray uh, adapter for the, for the rig. 
personally I'd quite like to just get this inverted pedal tray adapter yeah, it looks really nice really sharp and like looks nice and easy to attach to the rig um, but I really want to try this out so we'll do a separate video on that seeing what it's like to drive with and how it feels but you can do, you know, obviously you can just bolt your pedals to, to this um, and, get, and then get any pedals that need to be inverted which is really nice um, check out our video on uh, Sabelt if you haven't uh, we go more de in depth into the rigs we tried them out and we also did a factory tour but they also have uh, so they've got their chairs as well they've got three chairs available formula uh, GT and then another GT seat um, but uh, the formula the formula seats where it's at forget all the rest of the stuff guys forget everything the inverted pedals and the formula seat that's where it's at so uh, we'll be checking this out more in another video uh, but that is Sabelt a nice little stand actually nice and clean quite minimal who's got the best stand so far at the moment hard to say actually we'll have to we'll do we'll have to do a rundown after maybe that's a separate video guys who has the best uh, stand hey, you who has the best stand at Simracing Expo? So here we have the Fanatec booth, guys, which is a, a monstrosity of a booth where we've got some uh, wheels hanging out on top of the uh, the framework here. This is the ultimate way of storing your wheels. Uh, you just need some scaffolding um, and uh, that's, that's what you do. I, I could put one of these in the basement. Uh, we've got the Fanatec Porsche wheel rim here. We've got the uh, new... Uh, the new uh, adapter universal hub uh, on their uh, rally well the round wheel rim it's really nice actually leather um, we've also got a, the m sport hub and uh, we've got their, their d the original d rim on the uh, cub sport hub um, but the big thing at fanatec is the fanatec cub sport dd that's right we've got another dd wheel coming at you from the fanatec crew and this wheel is a 12 newton meter direct drive wheel and it's sort of their next up oh, it's like the uh, rep well, the replacement for what was originally the club sport you remember the club sport wheel was like really popular the dd version of that effectively so an upgrade from if you have the uh, csl dd or the dd pro probably get the names wrong here they now have a uh, a, a, a 12 newton meter dd uh, which could be like the end game for a lot of people to be honest and they've got the rigs here uh, allowing you to jump on and try it out um, of course also using their uh, new qr2 which uh, was in development for a quarter of uh, a millennia and uh, i've had a go on this earlier and uh, the nice thing with it is uh, it's so they've got the 12 newton one 12 newton meter one here they are going to be also be doing a, another one that's higher newton meters but the main thing is it's not the newton meter stuff it's the fact that the slew rate on it the speed at which the wheel accelerates uh, is faster and uh, also it's smoother so it should even be an upgrade not just speed wise and strength wise from the other dds that they had uh, it should also be an upgrade in terms of feel and performance uh, it also has a uh, they've got a new driver layer on it as well that's that's a podium on that one i think yeah that's the podium uh, and that will have um, uh, the sort of uh, true force i don't know what planet are calling it uh, vibrator force 10,000. i don't know but uh, that uh, allows you to get track details and uh, curbing and bumps and stuff but personally I'm not that interested in that but uh, we also have uh, the CSL here on this on this rig where they're playing uh, Gran Turismo and that's quite nice with the console games it's a good way to get into sim racing so you can uh, you know you've got your games console you can then get a wheel you can then get hooked into it and before you know it you've got a sim rig and your life is being totally ruined Gran Turismo's and your Forzas are the are the games that get people uh, hooked into this uh, treacherous and uh, terrible terrible hobby so they are just playing around on Gran Turismo there 
personally Gran Turismo doesn't really have the best force feedback does it but it does work and you can jump onto it and drive it so it's something uh, what else have we got in the Fanning Tech booth the Formula Rigs which they've had for a while we've also got a Tortellini get him out ban him take him out ban Tortellini from Sim Racing Expo 23 get out what is he doing oh dear how's it going we're doing a virtual tour of Sim Racing Expo um, how, have you, how did you get in Seto Corsa Competizione thinks the force feedback is acceptable. Yeah, it, it's perfect there. Absolutely. It's game. A terrible guy. We've got the iRacing guy walking past there. He just gave us a bit of stank eye. <laughs> but uh, no, he's alright actually. We were chatting with the iRacing guy. He did murder me, so we're, we're all good there. But uh, how are you doing? It's alright. Yeah. What, what should people follow you on? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's even a good idea. Or no. Okay, don't follow, yeah, don't don't follow do Tortellini. Don't do it. I'm doing my tour, so you've got, I'm, I'm catching it later. Okay. You're ruining the Very video. Great. He's already ruined the video. This, um, will be the, this will be the trough yes. in the video. The view numbers will drop here. Shirts, though. Tortellini brings the shirts. Not bad, not bad. Catch you later. Nice to bump into you. <laughs> We've just rejected it. Get out, get out. Uh, what were we saying, guys? Formula rigs, before we were rudely interrupted by the Tortellini. Formula rigs. Uh, so, F1 sim racing. Oh, I don't know what that's about. Um, you know, I don't know. Maybe some esports with Formula One could be happening. I don't know. Uh, but it be interesting to see. These do look like they would be good rigs to use in a Formula Esports competition for sure. Um, there we go. We've got this over here. Uh, I've sat in those rigs. We've looked at them last year. Really nice rigs. Uh, I don't know if you can get them at home though. But. That is mostly it for Fanatec, as I say, it's the new DD wheel, which I think is actually quite a nice wheel, and you know, new DDs, can't go wrong there. Uh, there's the uh, Bentley wheel with the uh, display that moves, I don't, I don't think you can even buy this yet. Um, and uh, then of course Fanatec have t-shirts, hang on, I've been trying to get one of these for ages. Stolen. <laughs> Thank you, that's mine now. No, nah, we won't steal from Fanatec. Oh, God, how do I get it? I've got to try and get one, though. Um, so what else? Uh, hello, Simo guys. Hello, how's it going? I'm just doing a, a quick tour of yeah. Simo Race Next Expo. Have you got a booth here? Or are you just, I'm just here. Oh, you're just here. Yeah. Awesome. I, I need to talk to you guys ah. separately, but uh, you can wait. Everyone needs to get a Simo. Can we have a, you can have a selfie. I'm going to do a selfie. In the, in the, in the tour video, as a selfie. Yeah, Sim Hub, absolutely incredible software, controls displays, tactile transducers, it makes you more sexy, and you're the man behind it, the legend. That's it. That's it. Every day I use Sim Hub, and you should too. Just make sure it's Sim Hub that you type when you Google it, not the other one. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to look out for you later. Can you message yeah. me on Instagram or something? And I'll. And I'll uh, I'm I'm can, fine. Yeah, I'll see, I'll see you. Awesome. Thank Great you. to have you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Sim Hub guys at the Fanatec booth. Um, what am I missing? What have I missed? I don't know. We also have a, uh, a budget, you know, budget car parked here. This is one of Thomas's uh, daily drivers. Uh, is it the, the Vanquish? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the name of cars. But this is what he does. His, this is what Thomas does. He's shopping in. A um, little bit annoying when you go to Lidl's, but plenty of room there for your basics. Fit a few sausages in there. What else could you need? But that is Fanatec, guys. Let's continue the virtual tour. What we got here? We got some uh, some oxygen, some gas, and we've got some. Uh, that would have been for moving the car around. And we've got uh, Pro Sport Racing. Is that uh, another Aston Martin? It is. Pro Sport Racing are one of the esports teams that's driving today, so we'll keep a distance so we're not getting in the way of people. But they are on these nice tailor made rigs, the ones we were showing earlier where you can really adjust them. Really awesome uh, rigs, nice little uh, esports corner. Oh, I've just seen something, I've just seen something. It's a radical SR3, the best car in the world, absolutely the best car in the world. Who's they've earned? They've earned extra views this year, whoever this is. Uh, Rensport.nu.den.nurken. I can't read. 
it's part of uh, the, the S3S or SRS or Sim Racer shop. Um, but look at that, Radical SR3, guys, that's where it's at. Best car. Is this the XX? I oh, know it's just this. I don't know what year this one is. I'm not sure what year this one is. Maybe like 20, 2018 SR3? It's not the XXR, I don't think. I think it's the. Uh, this is standard SR3. Beautiful though, look at that. That is vehicular perfection. Everybody should have these. Uh, originally, when the first SR3s came out, they were road legal. The headlights, number plate and everything. But then uh, I don't think they sold very well and uh, they just ditched it. And then it became one of the most popular uh, track day prototypes. At least the most sold prototype that exists. Um, amazing value for money. You can get these second hand for like 70,000 pounds. Um, and you need a trailer and then you need to heat the oil so you need £130,000 but then you're sorted you've got a radical and it's happy times we've got more eSport teams here though we've got their rig Fanatec DD they've got this is how they uh, keep how they keep focused they've got their fizzy drink down here what, what are they what are you guys drinking? ISO Donny Sport Gear to Rankin is that how you say it? can, can I take this? Yeah? yeah? No, I've got to take it. Thank you. <laughs> take that I'm taking the whole thing. Bring the, bring the bottle back. Okay, that's how... Do you, I have to give you money, and then when I bring the bottle back, I get the money back. That's how it works in Germany. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's it called when you do that? Fant. Hmm? Fant. I don't know. I'm giving up on my German. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Thank you for the drink, though. We'll bring it back later. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, well, we got a, we got a drink out of it, so it's worth embarrassing myself for being a total tit. Here we go. We now have the uh, hello, <laughs> the gridandgo.com. Grid and go. <laughs> and they've had far too much energy drink today. What do you guys do? Yeah, we are doing a setup shop. You don't know really setup, go? setup shop. Oh no, I've been branded. You're, you're, you're branded That's it. Now. I'm now spot this this uh, video is now sponsored, sponsored by, by Grid and Go. Grid and go. Basically, awesome. We have a setup shop. Okay. We have awesome telemetry software for you to practice efficiently. Awesome. And uh, we have a sim racing team since the middle of the year. Cool. And we will compete in the GT500. Okay, that's Grid and Go, guys. Gary61.net. Grid yeah. and Go. Check them out. I'm now sponsored by Grid and Go. <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Right. SRP here, just chilling out. Look, he's on his phone. Serious business. Uh, Esports drivers crying. Not happy with his lap, lap times. Wondering what went wrong. I don't know. Right, and uh, oh, nice seats though with the uh, comfortable. Yeah. This is the Rastec. It's a, it's the Astatec. Uh, but no. Uh, well, this is the Rastec. Race Tech. Rastec is really good. They keep controls wheel. Yeah. Nice. And then I also got screen. And this is, looks like an absorbent material for when the driver yeah. pees yeah. themselves. Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah. Not okay. only from that, no. but also from that. Also comfortable. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so simracing-pro.com check them out esports driving and uh, I guess they have equipment and everything else we also have here a uh, I've got to have my drink <laughs> this ISO Danny sports ranking I don't even know what this is let's open it up drink between the legs oh oh this anybody that looks at us will think what on earth am I doing with my groin let's try this Actually, really nice. It's like a lime, fizzy lime. It's probably it, it just tastes like sugar. We'll be buzzing for the rest of the video. We needed that. Uh, oh, it's fizzy as well. Right. Thank you, I. So, Donny. <laughs> Donny uh, is probably an unfortunate word to use for a drink. We've got a uh, nice Mercedes here. Um, we have. Uh, to racer rigs with a set of course of competition and a Moser wheel. That's nice to see some Moser here. And uh, for the racer, ADA, AC, AD, ADAC, what's in this drink? I can't talk anymore. <laughs> uh, that, they're just, uh, I don't know why they're just promoting it. They've got some different rigs. It's just a little bit in the corner with some extra rigs. Uh, we have this one, it's quite interesting. I just use a seat mover. Uh, just two rear actuators. I actually think so. 
a lot of people are a bit critical of these seat movers because they're like, oh, well, you know, the chair's been moved into the pedals and, you know, but I've used a few of these seat mover sy uh, systems. Um, like, I think it's the AccuForce uh, do, do the systems with it. Oh, this also has a rear traction loss on the bottom, which is cool. Um, they're really quite nice for, like, braking especially, especially if you use tension seat belts with it. Oh, we've got the Mia! Let's <laughs> Inside sim racing. Hello. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, God, look, look. This is the view I get here. Oh, no. <laughs> are you guys, are you live as well? No, I'm not live, yeah. Oh, let's bring, we're, we're yeah. totally live. You're, You're live? live? Oh, oh crap. <laughs> oh, right. you want to be around there? Hey, everybody's going to tune away for a while. Guys, check out the sim pit if you haven't. I'm going to be catching up with uh, yeah, check out Jay later. Too. We're, just, we're just talking about this rig here. We were, I was just saying how a lot of people uh, slag off these rear seat mover type rigs. Right. But I've used them before, yeah. and I feel like they're quite good for like track texture, for yeah. being really responsive, uh, and braking and stuff can feel really quite nice on them. I agree. So, yeah, although I do think if I was going to buy a motion rig myself, yeah. If I was buying a motion rig, I would um, go for like four point actuators. Yep. So, but yeah. cost, value, like, there you can get really cheap seat move solutions that are hyper responsive, so it can be a good value for money solution. Yeah. No, for sure. Like, this is, like, these are good too. Like, you just want like basic motion. But, like, I just recently got a four post motion set up. Dude, I am loving it. Like, hang on, hang on, it just really casually cool. drops it. Oh yeah, I just got a, I just got a well, uh, four point motion. Maybe if you paid attention to like the sim pit, <laughs> oh. you would know what I have. Okay, okay. But you don't, okay. I know you're too busy talking G-forces with yeah, Billy. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Give him Billy a breakdown. Right, we're continuing this tour, right. but guys, check out the simpit.com. Hello, Sean Cole. Come Hello. <laughs> Throw this guy some love. Throw him some thumbs up and likes. Thank oh, you. Yeah. I'll catch He's you awesome later. Guy. Yeah, buddy, I'll see you around. Take care. Let Fist us bump. know. <laughs> so, that was the Sim Pit. That was the Actor Racer rear whatever this. And this is a... Um, I need to put this drink down somewhere. I can't carry this. It weighs a ton. What is this? An Audi... Isn't this an Audi Quattro? <laughs> an Audi... I don't know, guys. Bloody GT3 cars everywhere. And, and out. <laughs> so, oh god, is it the Saudi Audi but with the wrong paint job on it? Oh dear, I don't know what's going on. Uh, this, I think I've been poisoned by ISO Johnny. What? It's actually radioactive. Right, I need to drink this and then put it somewhere. Let's let's um, let's put this drink down somewhere. I'm going to put it on a table. Here we go. I'm going to put the drink down. <laughs> I'm going to put this drink down on the table over here and then we'll pick it up later. I can't carry it around with me. I've got some water in my back pocket. So only, we can only carry one drink at a time. Um, so, let's see if they notice. I'm just going to sneakily put this here, look down here, and then we'll, we'll pick it back up. No one's seen us do that. We will come back for it later. Goodbye, crazy radioactive drink. And uh, <laughs> now our hands are free and I won't keep sick, 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 sipping on whatever is... <laughs> it's just pure sugar. My brain's going into meltdown. Right, keep it together. Keep it together, guys. Next booth, next booth we have. Let's go through this magic gateway. Woo! Straight through. We have more of these actor racer rigs, uh, this time on a four point motion system. Um, see, really nice. Look, actually, that's a really good example of how the rig is moving over the bumps. So you can see the whole, if you're in a car and you're like cresting over, the whole rig is moving, which gives you that really nice sensation that you get in a vehicle. And actually, weirdly, when it comes to motion rigs, the one thing these four-point actuators nail it's like it is really like a real car it's bizarrely like a real car you'd have g-forces but when you're on like a track um, that has like a hill and the whole car lifts and all four wheels have lifted the suspension's light this type of motion rig captures that movement um shocking like i uh, drove a real aerial atom and uh we, the, the track i was on had like a weird bump on it and i was like oh well it feels like a motion rig but it's a real car um, so, uh, yeah, it's 
I'd say if you've got lots of money to spend and you want to go all in, four point uh, actuators are the way to go. Oh, he's in the Radical SR3 XXR in a Seto, another company with a Seto. Get in there, absolutely fantastic. Look at this. Driving around the best track on the Isle of, uh, on the Isle of Man, of course, uh, located in the middle. Nice catch. <laughs> Really good with the traction loss there, and that uh, Radical Mod's really good fun to drive in AC. We'll do more community racing with that, I promise, guys. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. We'll uh, do an announcement for it. But it's using the, uh, I don't know what pedals he's using here. Sim, the Sim Magic hydraulic pedals, and he's a sock racer. But uh, it's nice. Really, the traction loss actually is quite a nice thing with motion rigs and does add quite a bit of uh, feel. Personally, when I've used traction loss systems, I tend to feel like it's a bit out of time with the sim. Not the initial rotation, but it's the um, the recovery of the traction loss, you notice. I think it's very hard to mask that recovery. Um, but it'll be interesting to try it on that rig and see what it feels like. So that'll be another video. Uh, watch out for that. We also have here another to race a rig just on the floor nice and chilled out he's driving the lotus formula car in ac nice to see and they've got a leaderboard challenge going on here not bad so now we have the uh i, I don't know why ace attack uh, they've got a bus this is what they're living in for for sim racing expo the ace attack guys are all just living in this bus i wonder if they managed to transport everything that they've got in this Acertech bus. Look at that. Acertech Sim Sports bus. And it's got a, a box on the back of it. <laughs> How does this. Is this even road legal? But, uh, yeah, well, I guess they maybe, they. maybe they do fit all their stuff in it as well. Or maybe they just. Maybe it's the truck they probably use for their uh, racing team, actually. Probably put their. Uh, LMP3 car in it, maybe. Uh, that would make sense. Uh, it's probably for the racing team rather than the simulator stuff. Right, who we got now? Who we got now, guys? We, uh, as we continue through, um, we now have... I recognise that one. Uh, right. <laughs> we now have Get Closer Racing, and uh, we have their rigs that look rather fancy. Look at this. Look at this paint job on here. Absolutely awesome. I like it. It's like a racing green with the golden pedals. Look, right, guys. Get Closer Racing are mental. <laughs> but they look awesome. This is like a, a little vintage wheel rim on it as well. Oh, man. This is fantastic. It's a shame there's no uh, gameplay or uh, racing on this. This is just, just there for a demo unit. If you want to buy a golden retro uh, rig, there's the QR code. Everyone buys sim rigs with QR codes these days. That's how it works. Nice uh, carbon fibre seat. I'm sure this is a budget, another budget rim uh, ri uh, rig. <laughs> Looks ridiculous. I actually quite like it. It kind of has a um, a sort of uh, steampunk kind of feel to it. Uh, it's, it's, it's absurd, but it does something to me. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Hang on, hang on, we've just spotted someone coming in. It's Brad Weasel. <laughs> How's it going, man? Poor Des. No, this is a video. It's going to get censored now. I can't, I'm not going to go through this and beep it. I'm just. I'm Richard to it. You're going to Oh, no. I'm, doing a, I'm just doing a tour at the moment. Uh, what have you seen? No, that nothing. You, nothing. You yeah, must see anything. Just here. Well, I've just got here. I'll have to catch you later and we'll. Uh, some drinks and stuff so uh, nice to see you, you though go, guys go and subscribe to him do, you help? do i need help i need a lot of help <laughs> i'll see you later so go to rad Riesel, guys absolute legend uh portuguese streamer sim racer and just great guy we were at sim racing expo previous years um spa 24 oh we've been to loads of stuff with him really nice guy uh back to the uh, steampunk sim rigs though we got a. Uh, look at this, they put a aero. They've stuck a, uh, like a formula, a miniaturized back of a formula car on a uh, Simicube. 
<laughs> these guys, I'm telling you, get close race guys are mental. But uh, actually, I quite like it. It's ridiculous, but I like it. It's a, uh, it's a. Uh, oh, look at this rig in purple. I'm pretty shallow, guys. You put some anodized metal with some nice colours, and um, I'm, uh, I'm sold. Um, we have a, a gateway, a portal behind the ring. That'd be quite cool for streamers to have a, like a lighting box behind you. Wonder what that would look like on a live stream camera. But get closer racing here. What else have they got apart from these steampunk rigs? There's a there's a, a white and red one. Look at that. They're so they're so confident in the design of it. They're like, we don't need a PC and people to drive it. We'll just we'll just let you look at it. That's that you know. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Over here. So they've got one of their bases here, and then. Uh, They've got stuff on display. Mesa deal, £1,499 for a pedal tray, race work uh, pedals. And they've got the, these are the, um, you saw these on the rig that they use as their mounting solution. So you can buy those separately to build your own crazy T slot sim rig if you wanted to. So, oh, they're so like chunky, <laughs> just like machined aluminium. Aluminium. Uh, that's nice. We've got some more pedals there, and we have uh, some laptops. I don't know why. Intel lap. What, what is this? Eraser Midian. I've never heard of that. I don't, I don't know what that is. Oh, look at what it is, guys! It's another Radical SR3. Amazing, amazing. Oh, beautiful. Oh dear, that's two Radicals uh, at one show. Oh, perfect. Nice, uh, quite nice in the cream livery actually. This looks like um, an older one t compared to the other one we were looking at. This looks like a, 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 a more original SR3. It's got the round steering wheel. Obviously, you can spec these, respec them, upgrade them, and do all sorts of things with radicals as you can with any car. But oh, absolutely, I mean, to me, this is perfection. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, guys. But radicals, oh my god, absolutely beautiful cars. Um, yeah, I've always I've always been obsessed with radicals. <laughs> Bring back that road legal one. I mean, they do technically have a GT4 road legal radical, but um, it misses the point. This this is where it's at. Forget the SR10 as well. Shit, drives like shit. It's terrible in i racing. SR3 guys, that's where it's at. Uh, but here is a working get closer racing ring with some get closer racing guys behind it and some eraser guys watch out they'll erase you um we've got the uh, sim core wheel rim on here we've got a, 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 a simu cube wheelbase we've got some fans it's just quite cool it's got a fan system at the top uh, the fans suck it in and then uh, are directed with these funnels and then you've got the whole uh, the four actuators for the motion and then they're using a uh, HP Reverb G2, I think, is a headset on that. So uh, pure immersion there. It seems a shame to be wearing a VR headset when you've got a nice rig to look at. And they've got a ball mouse attached onto the side of the rig. I wonder how well that works. It's not a bad idea, actually. Uh, I should have thought it's that. Not oh, it's not attached. It. It's not for it. No, that'd be a good idea, though. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's a good idea. Yeah, put a ball mouse on the next rig, and then, then for the driver, that, yeah. will, that will be a uh, £200 consultancy Hello. fee. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, so that's that rig there. We've just done some uh, consulting. We've just innovated. All right. And now we have a uh, the Sim Switch rig, which we uh, saw last year. This one's absolutely mental. So uh, if you haven't seen it, basically you can just use these switches here to move the... Uh, the pedals can go forwards and backwards. The so, <laughs> you can move it up and down, and then you can move the seat tilted there, and uh, that lets you uh, adjust it really quickly. So for stuff like trade shows and events, if different people want to jump in, you know they can, and then you can just whilst you're sat in it, you can adjust it. So I guess if you're just like really wealthy and you just want a mental rig that's totally 
reclinable and, and electronic like a fancy pan cinema seat you've got that as an option we've also got tactile transducers and it's a butt kicker uh, on the chair so in combined with the motion which obviously this will be more suspension the butt kicker will be more for uh, like road texture vibrations and uh, like the butt kicker is really good immersion gear shifting uh, engine when you're parked obviously when you're going faster the engine's going so fast you can't really feel the vibration of it so much i mean you can in a real car but you need to be you need the uh, butt kick on the back but yeah really good for immersion really good for finer details and then really good for suspension uh, using the uh, the corner actuators but this rig sim switch rig is bonkers and this rig actually makes eye racing this is probably when i've used this rig it's one of the rigs that makes eye racing feel a lot better normally i'd say hardware doesn't make a sim it doesn't really help fix the simulator i mean it can't ultimately but when you uh, when you use this rig with the headset and everything set up and th these guys have set this up really really well um it actually makes eye racing shine as much as you could possibly make eye racing shine and it's a very fun experience so if you happen to be i think they've got a, a sim switch and get closer racing are based at a a race track I, I don't know if it's a Nordschleife or a Spa I think, I think they are based at one of the race tracks they're based at a race track um, so if you happen to be there I'll find out where it is or you can google it you lazy gigs um, try, try it out and you'll, honestly you'll be really really surprised what do we have next what do we have next uh, we are being distracted by the radicals still uh, we now have we now are on to the Asher. We're, we're to Asher here. <laughs> this is where I really do start to lose my voice and you start going a bit mental when you just talk for, I know I always talk for two hours straight in the live stream, but there's a chat there. Talking to yourself for two hours, you just feel like you're going totally do lally. But I mean, guys, we're covering it for you guys. Pure VR, Sim Racing Expo. You don't even need to go. You can just watch my video every year. Subscribe and like. God, KW suspension there. Eh? As a <laughs> KW suspension um, cordon. That has got to be the most expensive and elaborate cordon in the history of cordons. But it's all to protect a McLaren Trophy uh, GT, McLaren GT3 car. Um, absolutely uh, gorgeous car, the McLarens. Not what I normally pick in simulators. I like them in AC1, I don't really like them in ACC, don't like them in... Oh, I like them in... I think it's R-Factor 2 does them nicely. I think it's one of those vehicles that's really good in some sims and terrible in others, or very divisive. Um, but uh, Asha, of course, uh, they've got like a partnership with McLaren. So Asha have this McLaren wheel, we showed it earlier. Really nice uh, wheel rim, 800 euros, but uh, absolutely top-notch stuff. Um, Asha, really, just really good equipment loads of people partnering with Asher, uh, Sabel uh, partnered with Asher as well for uh, their, their Formula Rim, uh, I think it's just because everyone knows that they're good quality and, and Asher were like one of the early, uh, early independent high quality rim producers, uh, so uh, and Asher Martin's a, a legend so I guess that also helps as well. What have we got here as well, we've got some track time rigs, Nice to see uh, the game seat TT3033. It sounds like a 1970s uh, build it yourself computer or uh, a new uh, Terminator film. Uh, looks shit. <laughs> Sorry, track time. Okay, it looks terrible. I don't know. I had, a tra I had a track time rig. Track time did the uh, they did race room rigs really early on and they're really not. Uh, I had one and I put an Force wheel on it and it bent. Well, I, you know, you're not meant to put an Force. wheel. They, when they first built them, the DD wheels didn't exist. It's a budget sim rig. But uh, because that happened, because I put my DD wheel on a track race, a, uh, not track race, a track time rig, and it bent and broke, since then I don't like them. But uh, maybe they're all right. Maybe I'm being too harsh. Let me know in the comments. We also have this track time rig. Here we go. They've redeemed themselves. I've used these rigs and these are all right. So track time have recovered. They've recovered themselves, and actually, it's quite novel the way the uh, these track time rigs work. There should be some behind us, actually, because um, 
race room uses track time rigs for their event ones and uh, you have the uh, three actuators two side one at the back um, you actually get a really nice seat mover motion but because it's got the three actuators um, the movement is much more similar to if you had four actuators on a full full motion rig um, these track time rigs actually do feel really good and the race room event stuff is really cool if you if you ever um, I don't know if the brand's hatch one is still going but if you ever um, are at race tracks you often find the, the race room uh, software and these track time rigs so you can jump on them, you can race people, they have to do competitions. They are genuinely really good and if you've got one of those uh, race room centres, really good if you've got a group of people and you want to do like a racing event or something. So uh, in fact, yeah, really, they're, they're actually really nice. Now, I don't know what this is though, um, this rig here, motion kit prototype by track time. So this is a a seat mover solution coming out in uh, 2024 so actually that will be quite interesting to try uh, a, a very a much smaller pure seat mover looks like they've gone to try they've tried to reduce the costs of what they're doing here with this taking the technology from this but miniaturizing it and simplifying it into a smaller solution that people could probably have at home so that's the uh, two depth of field motion kit prototype starting at 2500 that is a good price uh, pretty pretty standard pricing for a uh, seat mover motion well, normally the cheaper type of motion but with the rig and everything that's uh, that'd be interesting i don't know if that 2500 i don't know if that includes everything or maybe not all the wheels and everything but i don't know if it's the full frame or if it's just the motion actuators but uh, that's pretty cool to see uh, oh, here we go. Now we're talking. Look at this. We have a uh, track time rig, but we've got Microsoft Flight Sim in uh, virtual reality. I don't know what headset is that? A Vario headset? XR3. Yeah, it's a Vario. <laughs> the, Vario the XR3 Vario headset. And, the very small one. Uh, the one. Okay, so, <laughs> and uh, they are flying around. Can I tell the airport? New York. New, New York, okay. And they are, that's an interesting approach that they're going for. Um, they're landing on the taxiway. That's a, not gonna, not ideal. The runway's to the right, but that's okay. Oh, there you go. Nailed it. Any landing you can walk away from is a good one. <laughs> but so uh, they've got the honeycomb uh, uh, yoke on there. That's fantastic, actually. Not force feedback, but it feels really good. It's a little bit stiff to push in and out. It's like if you were, if you're flying a light aircraft like a Cessna uh, and you're already up to speed, it's kind of stiffness. But if you if you were landing and taking off, it's a little bit too stiff. But it's it's good for what it is. Really good value for money. They've got the um, full uh, control uh, or the throttle, the uh, mixture. Really nice bits of kit there. And then they're using the uh, the Thrustmaster pendular rudder system. Uh, these are really, really nice. Um, you, they're, they're annoying. I've got a set of these and I can't use them myself because um, you can't fit these on a normal sim rig easily, especially when you've got pedals and it's not convenient to move them. Uh, but So the way these work is that you've got toe brakes and then you can push them forwards and backwards. Obviously they're connected, you see the other side. Um, these feel really nice. They're not quite as stiff as uh, real aircraft that I've flown but uh, they feel really, really nice nonetheless. Um, and you can adjust them a lot with the springs and the tension and everything. Uh, really, really nice and they feel good on the feet. So that's a really nice uh, rig. We'll have to, we'll definitely have to have a go on this because you know how much I love flight sims. I know you guys hate flight sims, but flight sims VR, flight yokes and pet, come on, amazing stuff there. So uh, we'll see you later, but <laughs> take care. Uh, so that's the track time flight sim. 15,599 euros. Um, definitely worth just checking out Flight Sim, guys. If you haven't, you can uh, get Microsoft Flight Sim on Game Pass. Highly recommend it. And also, Flight Sim 2024 is going to have career mode and uh, actual gameplay in it, whereas the current Flight Sim is a bit uh, lacking in that regard. It's, it's more um, I don't know, hardcore you have to make your own stuff up to do you can get mods you can add stuff to it but not officially in the game landing challenges and stuff but you know it'd be really nice if flights in 2024 to have uh, actual stuff 
in the game to do as a career. So uh, flight sim at Sim Racing Expo, but uh, now I'm on the uh, KW. Uh, it's like a nice carpeted. I walked up there, but you didn't notice. Let me go back down. We're on the uh, KW uh, stand, <laughs> but these this feels very luxurious. Oh, it's like uh, we got this carpet here. Can we draw something on the carpet? Hang on, hang on. Right, let's let's be really mature here, guys. Uh, draw. <laughs> oh, oh no, oh no! You know what's happening. You know what's coming. <laughs> what is he going to draw? It's it's. Oh, oh, oh! It's a smiley face, obviously. It's a smiley face. <laughs> yeah. Glad that's in the video. God, I've got the maturity of a toddler. We have it here. It's just, <laughs> it's just there on the floor now, permanently. We have a KW suspension, really nice uh, suspension. Uh, I know nothing about it. Uh, there you go. If, you, if you've got a race car or even a road car, you know, they do stuff from road cars to race cars. But if you like performance suspension, maybe KW is a good brand to go with. They, of course, KW um, own uh, race room and all the race room stuff so uh, well, I don't, they don't make it that's done by the guys at race room the programmers and the hard working people at race room but they they own it but what do, what do they do they just own it that's not that's not doing it is it but yeah so KW suspension uh, there's their stand from sim to real and uh, of course they're doing a lot of stuff with Tim Heinemann now uh, he's been doing really well doing DTM uh, is his car um, so yeah I mean obviously we all know that you can go if you're a really good sim racer you could probably do well in a real car if you're relatively fit and healthy and you have a little bit of practice it's not really like a surprise anymore or like a new thing the, the difficulty of course is always the fact that you have to be um, rich <laughs> it doesn't matter how good you are at sim racing you have to be rich is the, is the difficult part, not the skills. Money's the hard part, but, uh, you know, I think it's really nice how with sim racing, you can use it to train, to practice, to get good, and then, oh, no, we've been slowly I'm invading. How's it going? I was just talking about money being a problem in sim racing. Oh, we've got other people here. We've got a live stream. Oh, We're invading a live stream. Hello. So, do I, do, do I, I don't know you. I don't know you as a channel. My hands are full. Like, I'm Shiva. Shiva, okay. Shiva Lion. Shiva Lion, nice to meet I'm you. A German streamer. Okay, cool. Hello, uh, Shiva Hello. Lion viewers. Yes. And oh, you're live. Uh, my name's Bold Git that doesn't know what he's talking about. And it's from the end. Yes. Wow, look, at, look at this. <laughs> Sorry, it's like but... the Spider Man meme, you know the Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> there's some cameras everywhere. I'll see, I'll see you later. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll chat to you later. Yeah, Good to know you a bit. Okay, cool. Is it right, stream? Make sure to follow, subscribe, and like. Or where do we go on Twitter? Twitter or Hulu Plus, Instagram. It's on everything. Everything, everything. I'm just assuming that you speak English. I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. I'm okay. from German. I speak German, but I can speak English as well. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm everywhere. Bye, guys. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye. 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 Around later. Yeah. Swolio guys, who's been on stage, as I said earlier, selling his hardback books with all the information softback, you need. Hardback. Hard hardback. Hard but it's physical. How can I trust what's in it if it's soft? It's not a hard back, it's a soft back. It's wow, hard. all the information's ruined now. You've ruined you've ruined it. How, how are you doing? Uh, surprised. Uh, it's, it's doing well. Like, I actually, Let's walk and talk a little bit. Uh, 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 yeah, after the, 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 the stage talk, I got like so many people like getting the books. And I, was, yeah. like, I was there for like three hours straight. So nice. Now I'm like, my, I'm feeling my legs. Finally relaxing a bit, up to eat something. Uh, I actually have to present to you uh, my well, editor. I, I'll, I'll come over in a bit. I'm just doing a tour. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah you've just invaded, sure. and this is now turned into the Swolio yeah. interview tour deliberately. Guys, we'll you need to. Again. What you need to do is you need to check out his book. It's called the Motor Racing Book. It's called the Motor Racing Book, but it's about sim racing. No, it's about everything. It's about everything. Yeah. In the meaning of life. Exactly. 
It's a bit of fun. Right, I'm a fan of Australia now. He's, he's read good books. <laughs> so, right, here we go. Nice to see you. I'll catch you later. We're going to continue the tour. Perfect. Check out Australia's book. Have check fun. out his Twitch channel. Flag all his content and complete the Twitch party. Terrible streamer. Yeah, we'll see you later. later. Yeah. <laughs> that was Swolio Abidia. And uh, now we have a coffee racer. Uh, who do actually, if you've not seen it before, Coffee Racer do uh, apparently sofas with covers on them. They do this box here which allows you to um, basically hide your sim racing equipment from uh, your other half. Uh, you know, if you don't have any space and you want to have your wheel and pedals and put them away somewhere and pretend it's just a coffee table and hide your disgusting hobby from people, uh, Coffee Racer offer this solution. And uh, I've not tried it yet, so we'll actually have to give this a go and hopefully do a bit of a video on it. But you can see they've got it set up with a PS5 uh, VR TV there. But uh, it's quite a cool concept, and it's a shame that there's not more companies that do this sort of solution of um, compact sim rigs, or ways that you can have a nice solid sim rig that you can use in front of your TV and properly hide away. If you've got a nice uh, you know, you've got a small flat or a nice apartment that is decorated nicely. Maybe you don't want to be a total degenerate and have a full on uh, T slot sim rig. I mean, you should do, really. I mean, what's the point of having a house without a T slot sim rig? But if you wanted to keep it minimal, this sort of thing's really cool. So it'll be interesting to try that out properly. Um, and they have some, uh, they've got a coffee machine here and some stoop bottles. They must be, are they a Dutch company, I'd imagine? They've got to be Dutch if they've got stoop bottles there. Um, there's the coffee racer rig in action, look at that. It's got the office chair, it's got the pedals. Simu Cube, it's playing a bit of iRacing. So as you see, pretty uh, locks down. It's got wheel uh, caster locks on it as well. It's pretty cool. So we'll have to, definitely have to give that a go. Come back through here and uh, keep going. I think we've almost reached the end, guys, of the entirety of the Sim Racing Expo. Uh, we do have here a nice F4 car. Look at that! The uh, from the F4 French Championship. Really nice, though. Nice, see, F4 cars are relatively simple because they obviously try to keep the cost down. Still ends up being bloody expensive, but on the scale of Formula cars, F4, with, it, with there being so many people producing the different chassis and it being one of the, the biggest Formula series now, um, I mean, I'm sure that, yeah, there's, all, there's lots of little uh, Formula series, F3 and Formula Ford and things, but f for, on that sort of step up was F4, F3, F2, F1. Uh, there's a lot of people doing F4. Uh, loads of support series races. Looks really nice though, quite nice in blue. Um, it'd be nice to see in this. Hello. Hi, Michaelis. All right, hello. Race of each other, F4. So, so an iRacing murderer is here. Everyone. It's not a surprise when he's buying the F4 car, oh, he's just lingering man. around it. I'm going to be in that soon. Oh, nice. nice. Oh, uh, I'll catch you around, I'm just doing a, a tour video. But nice to bump well, into people. Yeah. Stop crashing into people online, you're the worst. Real eye races in person, they do exist, and they're that was like uh, that was like eye racing voice chat, but in real life. We now have uh, some Venom guys here with their rigs. Um, let's have a quick look here. We've got a nice Sparco seat, we've got the nice, uh, we've got the branding on the back of it. This is one of the cool things you see quite a few uh, companies now offering uh, the uh, seat branding option. So, for like esports teams or promotional stuff. You can have a nice rig with your seat on it and it's all like really clear with whatever design you want. Um, this is with a Sparco seat, Sparco seat mounts. Uh, they're running iRacing on it with a Fanatec DD, Podium DD, Formula Rim. Really nice. We've got a uh, Sony A6400. I've got some of them, nice camera there. Nothing to do with sim racing. Uh, what pedals are we running here? I don't know what these pedals are, but they're, they're FIA official, so it's legit. Uh, but that is uh, the Venom uh, racing. I'll jump in here later, I'm doing a, we're doing a tour at the moment, but nice to see you guys, you've got the Venom pedals as well. Yes. It's your time uh, to not hesitate to come and to try it. Okay, awesome, thank you very much. Nice to see you again, chat later. Right, uh, that was the Venom booth. We're almost at the end here. We have the 
Sim Racing Sim Stutster. I don't know what this is. They've got the they've got an Asher Formula rim, and we also have. All right, we have some. I don't know what pedals these are, but they've got like again we've actually got motors on them, but this time they're mounted sideways, and uh, that's actually quite cool. Uh, and they're actually bolted on, so presumably you could attach these to any pedals. Um, we also have little fans on here. Um, they're just like mini, mini directional fans. They're a really like nice small solution, which is cool. One of the smaller fan solutions. What, who, so what's the company for those? I, Ray Solutions. Ray Solutions. And the pedal Ray Solutions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the rumble kits. Okay, so, so you... We have the rumble kits for okay. the pedals and uh, the wind simulator. Oh, awesome. That sounds really cool. So how, how much is this, uh, the rumble kit? Normally the rumble kit price is 130 euro yeah and uh, this is now fitting for who is the for the ultimate and sprint okay so you, you does it do they all use the same controller or are they separate uh, that's that's the controller for the for the paddles rumble and this is for the for the wind okay and it, does the rumble kit come with uh, two or just one yeah, yeah two, two. Okay. So how, how much how much for 130 that? without v80 okay okay cool uh, and how much is the fans uh, 180, 185. Around. Okay, cool. I'll have to. And it's also integrated for the. Oh, on the, pet, on the yeah, on the mount. Awesome. We'll have to check that out. So that's Race Solutions. Cool. That's actually really cool. That's uh, that'd be really interesting. We'll we'll jump on and we we'll have to try it later on. Okay. And we have electrical pedal adjusters. Oh, okay. Also. Cool. So cool. maybe it's fitting for you. Guys, we, we'll have to check this stuff out later in a separate video because I really like the uh, I really like how small that is and uh, looks like quite an elegant solution. Most of the other solutions are a bit bulky and a bit, you know, maybe a bit fiddly to set up. Uh, but definitely the fan solutions are normally quite large, the ones I've used in the past, so that's cool. Uh, so that is Race Solutions uh, with their booth here. They've also got handbrakes uh, with nice, that's nice with a nice polymer. Is that on one of you? Well, we'll have to try yeah, that yeah, out yeah. as well. Yeah, we'll be coming back here, guys, so look out for that video. But they've got button boxes. They've got everything at Race Solutions. They're out of control. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Right, nice to see that. Oh, hello. Oh, we've got another one here. Sim, Simster. Sim Booster. Sim Booster. Booster. Booster, okay. Boost your performance. Okay, oh, cool. So it's like a... Uh, it's an analyzer. Yes, it's a software, yes. It's an AI race engineer that had easily helps the users to boost their performance and okay. improve their lap time. Cool. Well, I, we'll uh, check this out as well later on. I'm doing a quick tour, so I'm not going to spend too much time here. But I'll have a look later. But Sim Booster, then, if you want to get better, is this is this available now? Yes, it's available. It is our product launch. And yes, this is our first version. OK, yeah. cool. Well, I'll come back later and check that out. But there you go, guys. Sim Booster and... Uh, Solutions. Race Solutions in their booth, nice to see, and uh, more ways of finding out that you're a terrible sim racer, but maybe I'll make you a better sim racer, that's the point of those tools. The LMP3 car, that's very noisy, starting, of course, of course revving, just as we were trying to record something. Um, but, but we'll ignore that, we'll just talk very close to the microphone. We have here, sim rep. Who have been tortured by Asatec, who uh, repeatedly are revving their car up. And uh, the sim rep booth here, we have, uh, I don't know if you can hear my voice, guys, that LMP3 car is very noisy. Uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll catch on fire from being stationary. It's actually the new uh, sound update to ATC. Kunos have nailed the audio in this game. Surprisingly uh, loud. I think they make it, their players a bit deaf. Weird and Porsche sounds like an LMP3 car. What's up, camera muscle? <laughs> Hello. So on this rig, you can see they've got the uh, LED display here which uh, is really nice and clear. And
and not over the top like some of the other LED displays we've seen. Nice minimal details, really obvious what's going on, really obvious Delta bar. They've got their uh, sim rep wheel rim on here, which again is glowing like a 1970s disco. And uh, I don't know what's going on on the back here, but we have some uh, hydraulic system and what looks like a firework. Um, I don't know, I guess when you crash, maybe that goes off. Let's have a look at... Uh, some, uh, they've got a Cosworth wheel here with a display on it. Oh, really nice positive clicking buttons, really nice shifters. Uh, you know, oh, the, the, button, the buttons don't feel the best. Those are nice. The rotary coders are nice. Buttons not so much. Grip feels quite nice, but uh, nah, button fail on the Cosworth wheel. But nice display there, nice and clear. Here's the uh, DDU XX. One QR code 249 euros, nice clear display. I guess you could integrate that with SIM Hub. Um, and we've got uh, the P9XX wheel here, feels nice, a uh, little bit narrow for my taste. I prefer like wider grips, but uh, nice display on it. Yeah, not, not, not the best buttons for my taste. Rotary encoders are nice though, they're nice, yeah. Another, I mean, I guess like a Porsche or IndyCar wheel rim. Uh, and then we have the, some buttons. There we go, they're rotary encoders. That's quite nice, so you can feel the individual encoders. With, uh, and their uh, LCD display. Okay, again, 70s disco vibes. That, guys, basically concludes our tour of uh, Sim Racing Expo 2023. If we missed anything in this virtual tour, make sure to check out our videos that we're doing on some of the most exciting stuff that we've seen at Sim Racing Expo 2023. So uh, also give that but subscribe button a tickle and maybe click the like button. And of course, as I say, this video wasn't sponsored. It was all just for you crazy game of muscle people. So uh, thank you guys for making all this possible. Uh, until the next one, Happy tea drinking, take care, and goodbye guys.